Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. We are live, coming at you from the dank in Newtown. This is the Simpsons Index. He practiced that. This is episode 40 of the Simpsons Index. Hello, I am your host, Elliot J. O'Neill. And joining me in the dank tonight is... I didn't come prepared. Um, And? I'm Joe Namath. Oh, My car broke down. I'm Joe Namath. It was vapor lock. Thank you for joining me. As, uh, cut me in later. Cut me in later. <laughs> I'll think of something witty for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> joining me uh, once again is BT and Danny. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> How we doing? What's fun is you sounded like my impression of you when you fall asleep. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I know I, I sounded like you. in the deep fryer. <laughs> So yeah, the classic trio is here again to bring you another episode of The Simpsons Index. Yes, The Simpsons Index. What index may that be? The Simpsons one. And what happens on that index? This is the podcast where we review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but the catch is each episode comes from a different decade. And just then, we watched an episode from the HD era. It was called White Christmas Blues, um, which is season 25, episode 8. And first aired in December of 2013. Mm. Wow. That far back. They were still making crap. Mm -hmm. It was more innocent time. Guys, what'd you think? Oh, I haven't given it away yet. No, no. You you still (laughs) got got some secrets going on. Um, I got to the halfway point. I stopped making notes because I was bored. And then I started making notes again because I was angry. (laughs) It it really does ride the uh, parabola of that, doesn't it? Mm, A roller coaster of emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was bad. And maybe the audience you're asking me out there, hey, dude, uh, it's like Arch or April or something. Why the hell are you doing a Christmas episode right now? Did you call it Arch? <laughs> That's the month name, isn't it? <laughs> Arch or April. 30 <laughs> days has September, April, Arch, and November. I forgot. You, you <laughs> Doesn't have... go in that one anyway. <laughs> I forgot you have that thing where you can't pronounce M's. I'm very sorry. So I went into this episode very angry. Uh, I've had a rough day, guys. There's nothing per- nothing particular. Just a lot of little things like going to work. Ch- mm. f- work. Who needs that? Also, Barnsey. Ch- f- oh, hashtag Barnsey for life. <laughs> um, and this 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 episode, I was really hoping it'd be so shit that it'd be cathartic and mm-hmm. I'd like get all my anger out. But it's just sort of like condensing me into this white hot rage of how dare, how dare they, how dare they put unleash this monster into the world? They, they should be held accountable, you know. There should be punishments should be created and enforced in that order. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I am very disappointed in 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 each and every one of them. No, it was it was terrible. And look, you might be wondering why are we doing a Christmas episode in in this uh, time period that's very outside of Christmas? And I don't really want to tie um, episodes of the uh, Simpsons to actual holidays. Only one we'll do that is in Halloween, mm-hmm. and then coming up in May for Mayo Ween. Yeah, because one Halloween isn't enough. We need two each year. Yep. In keeping with that philosophy, here's the Christmas episode. Oh, and also it's like. Simpsons never used to depend on doing a Christmas special. Mm. In the first 10 years, they had two. Yeah, and but this one's very Christmas special. The whole intro sequence is redone to be Christmas-themed. Ooh. Yeah, so starting Obscenely out at this so. extensive intro sw- sequence, you're going to hear me bring this up a lot on this episode. This episode had too many sign gags. Yeah, yeah. I mean, usually oh, we love yeah. sign gags, but... They were much more shoving your face into the sign and rubbing your face around a bit and see if the window turned clean because then it'll be your window to wait game. Mm-hmm. I lost myself there. <laughs> uh, they weren't just trying to, you know, they didn't have funny things to put in the background. It's like they had a background quota they had to reach, you yeah. know. How much can we fill this shit with just everything imaginable and then more and then more and then more? Because if we have a blank s- second of space mm-hmm. on the screen... Our, the, the, the ADD generation is going to lose interest and flick over to f- reruns of Frasier. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's true, because I actually wrote down, um, let's say my note here is, it feels like it was written by a sentient calculator. <laughs> and the calculator was like, there is 2.3 seconds, we can add an extra joke. And <laughs> oh, yeah. calculator, Scanning for oh, Christmas yeah. references. Calculator, you don't understand the true meaning of Christmas or comedy. <laughs> let, let me show you the world, calculator. But uh, at the end, the calculator is like, I learned a positive lesson. Oh. I learned how to spell oh. boobs in numbers. <laughs> I had to hit AC on my philosophy. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Calculate the jokes. I know. <laughs> guys, guys. Why? Just cause. <laughs> oh, my God. I was going to go with, like, calculator <laughs> equals comedy, but no. <laughs> I didn't even get the horse out of the gate before it just lost and was turned into glue. Mm. Beautiful, man. Mm. Thank you. So, yeah, it starts out with this extended opening sequence, which there's really too much shit to go in on to, like, name. But, yeah, they do take the HD era um, sequence and they just extend it even more so. And mm. they kill Ralph and the um, baby Gerald, the baby with the one yeah. eyebrow. Hey, they neither of those are confirmed kills. I mean, that might have been a really light thing that landed on Ralph's head. The star off the top of the tree that goes kadunk when it just smashes into his skull. Yeah. Goes at least a you know half inch in, which I mean, given the size of Ralph's brain, might not have pierced him. Might have pierced yeah. the skull, but but yeah, baby Gerald was uh, he's been taken away. Mm. Yeah, but he hasn't been killed. He's just been chucked on the 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 not retarded the dis- d- discarded on the discarded pile of toys, which is where you know um, Super Ted comes from. Yeah. So clearly, it is not the end for him. I see what happens to discarded. Uh, uh, you know, this is just products. Yeah, they, it's, it's horrifying. Spotty men sprinkle magic powder on them, and they go on magical adventures. <laughs> <laughs> you had a different childhood to me. <laughs> <laughs> but the annoying thing about this whole intro sequence is that when they do get to the couch gag, it's just a postcard, and then bang, like straight away, like yeah. the, the the couch wasn't even a part of it. No, my problem with the whole it, w- it could have been okay if they did a little bit of Christmas stuff for it, but it was just so hey Christmas, huh? Eh? Eh? Yeah, yeah, eh? yeah, Christmas. It was like, yes, I noticed, but did you see? Yes, I How's did. about that Christmas, eh? <laughs> How about Otto trying to smoke of candy cane, eh? Eh? Yeah, yeah, like, that's Christmas. Mm, please take your elbow out of my ribs. <laughs> Grandpa was asleep in the snow and somehow holding a sign that just says, still warmer than a nursing home. Yep. Didum, shh, topical tennis. Yeah, because yeah. he wrote that sign and then went out to find a piece of snow to hide under so that... No, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. That's yeah, bullshit. Exactly. Then they did like a fast run past about 30 different quick like costume references. Mm-hmm. They were all boring. It wasn't important. Um, There was the Seinfeld bit. They, they yep, did Festivus, Festivus. With comic book guy. Yeah. I picked a bunch of others and I thought yep. there's no real reason for them to be here. None of these are funny. Um, I, I mentioned saying that at the time. I'm like, why are we watching these? things happen yeah well i mean i noticed the time when like the episode was like technically over and it was like 18 minutes and 50 seconds and then they extended it even more with like mm. repeats from the previous episode uh hey here's like they no- were really st- uh, filling time in this one yeah hey remember that time we did a song let's do another song uh, oh, oh yeah no, oh yeah it. but um so after the intro sequence there's a itchy and scratchy cartoon what do you guys mm. think of that uh you know i always i found it does surprisingly well when we watch The Simpsons watching TV. Is mm. actually it comes up in some of the classic episodes, and it actually happens a lot. This one's kind of dumb because Krusty's like sees how violent it is, and he's all like, "What? I've never watched an episode of this sober." And uh, mm. but the thing is, it did nothing with that. That didn't exist for a reason. Yeah, it was inconsequential. If you're going to have Krusty doing that, it's usually because there's a plot point to do yeah. with the network interference. It's not the first it. time he's been surprised by it, how graphic Itchy and Scratchy are either. Yeah. No. Um, I, I don't know if maybe now that he's sober up, he's like forgotten. Yeah. Maybe that was while he blacked out or something. That's or... what I'm guessing. I'm guessing between now and then he's a lot of, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. also uh-uh, a lot of a wooga. <laughs> <laughs> so they're putting up the decorations and I liked actually the premise of Homer having the Halloween decorations and just altering them slightly. Yeah, but... no, they had a little Halloween nativity scene I thought was yeah. kind of funny. And the um, skull Santa and yeah, that was kind of cute. But I mean, everyone's kind of noticing that Christmas is a bit crappy, like the candy canes are a bit smaller this year. Mm. And, and yeah, okay, so that's our plot point. Yeah, um, damn it, this Christmas has turned to crap. But watch your language. What? He said lots of those lots of times and yeah. never said boo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not like season two when he uh, did that whole hell rant and never said boo. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what you say when... That's great. <laughs> when you're offended, boo. <laughs> Damn. I'm going to start now because that sounds like fun. <laughs> Starts from the tradition of trying to scare the sass out of people. Someone's like, ah, fuck you, yeah, I'm like, boo. Ooh. <laughs> they will not know how to respond to that. <laughs> Motherfucker just say boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're crazy, man. I know, I'm looking forward to this. And this being Australia, I'll probably get called cunt by the mailman tomorrow, so... Speaking of Australia, um, Shaggy pointed out that they're complaining that their Christmas has no snow this year, and it's like, 
<laughs> Come on, kids. Get with it. Rookies. Yep. Ha! Yep. Ha! <laughs> yeah, like, we don't wear any clothes in Australian Christmas. It's that fucking hot. It's true. Mm. I'm often nude. Well, I'm nude right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Australia. What, what else would you wear? I know. I'm still overheating. <laughs> this is... You just wear a loincloth that contains your knife, and uh, <laughs> that's all you need, really. <laughs> Sensible attire, given the situation. Oh, yeah. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, they do a couple of global warming gags and uh, melting carolers, and I didn't even pay attention to their song. It was really arrogant and annoying. Yes, Uh, but it comes with a revelation that uh, due to the uh, steam coming out from the nuclear plant and the smoke coming from the tire fire, that somehow gets us snow in Springfield, and it's the only town to have snow. Yep, thank you. Another thing I hated about this episode is, there we go, plot announcing. It's not snowing in Springfield. It's snowing in Springfield. Yeah, Yeah. it was was weird. Why? Would have made way more sense to like start having tourists showing up and be like, why is everyone coming here? And then you'd be like, oh, well, you're the only place with snow. Maybe later in the episode, or maybe you just have a a side where Frank's like, that's actually not snow. And everyone's like, quiet. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Jesus. Do a little brainstorming Simpsons writers. God damn it. No, this was a calculator. I told you. (laughs) But, but, but. They were already running crazy under time and had to pad everything out. There was no way yeah. they could cut a whole scene, which is also a wasted scene. Um, but like this led to Homer's whole uh, extending delivery of, I don't have to pick up the dog poop now. Yeah, and that was dragged. slowly paced. Mm-hmm. I forgot um, about that, so thank you for reminding yeah, me. Also, it cuts straight from him going, Snow, do you know what this means? Straight to Quimby going, Snow, do you know what this means? Yeah. And it wasn't in a funny way. It was in like no one edited their script yep. way, you know? Yeah, just bad writing. Just mm-hmm. announcing the plot and just, yeah, using that feeding the audience. Do you know what this means? And so let me explain everything to you. Yeah, it would have been funnier if they just cut immediately to someone, to one of the writers looking directly at the screen going, Hello, audience. Do you know what this means? Mm. Let me tell you. And yeah, there weren't even any good gags amongst this whole thing, like when the town found out and um, there's a Slavic opponent who has a too long name and um, Martin Prince gets beaten the head with a bongo comic by a comic book guy. And it's like, why do that? Like, why are you undercutting your property right now? (laughs) I I don't know. It's a lot of... I don't... The calculator doesn't understand humor, man. <laughs> it only became sentient because of a little boy's wish. Mm. Oh. oh, and another weird, Wiggum and Lou fucking... Yeah, right, this, yeah. You, after you mentioned that they just do a lot of weird things with them now. It's yeah. Like, what wacky antics can we stuck, stick them in? Yeah, Wiggum's just in a giant snowball. He's like, ah, oh, well, I bent, I bent over to pick something up and then I rolled down a hill and oh, I'm big now and Lou's like, can't breathe. He's like, oh, well. I don't like your attitude. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of attitude in that hand. Like, I feel like the the writers are sick of them being cops. They just want like prattful guys, you know. They're, yeah. they're, they're and they just they're always doing that like passive aggressive couple thing, and it's like, yeah. oh, it's funny because yeah. they're doing relationship jokes, but they're just a, a policeman bunch of guys, yeah, yeah. chilling. Yeah, so they, they want every bit with them to end with ba 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 da ba. That's Lou. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, where's Eddie? Is Eddie still around? He's around, but like again, only when they need him. He's never the butt of these weird bit back and forth. Mm, nope. Uh, yeah, he's he's the Homer's watch now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He only shows up when needed. I liked it, uh, Christmas clams though. <laughs> I don't know why she bought them, but I thought it was funny. Um, Desperation. Uh, we should probably say what that was. I mean, they they yeah. were driving through the street and everything sold out to all the tourists. They overpriced everything. Uh, the no more turkeys. Is Christmas turkeys a thing? I, yeah. I, not in a, I'm an American a, Christmas turkey is a big. Thing. I thought it was Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah, just for it's, our American listeners, we usually have a Christmas uh, emu. <laughs> that is true. Mm, a walking bird, <laughs> and uh, instead of stuffing, we stuff them with kangaroo and cork. <laughs> <laughs> it just wouldn't be Christmas otherwise. Come yeah. to Australia, you won't believe the shit we get up to. <laughs> Uh, so they were all out, sold out of Christmas turkeys, but she got flagged down in the street by a guy who's like, oh, I've got some Christmas clams. Yeah. Uh, they're like $500 for a kilo. You want a kilo of clams? for Overpriced clams? And she's like, yes, I guess. I guess she's like, yeah. She kind of stopped and went, oh, we have a clams. Life's shit. And then she bought the clams anyway, because yeah. I guess it's that or starve. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Quickie Mart didn't have anything left except DVDs of milk. 
because they're all out of milk, but they have DVDs of oh, milk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we don't have Life of Pi, but we have Life of Poo, like our poo. Yeah, yeah that would have gone in a really weird direction. Just saying that out loud sounds a bit creepy. Mm. Life of Poo, yeah. 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 <laughs> Let us not make that film. So uh, some people from Wisconsin stumble upon, uh, drive upon the Simpsons house and uh, they ask for a, a room to stay, you know, yeah. a, a tale as old as Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. And Marge is all like, huh? And the Wisconsin guy is like, oh, Wisconsin people aren't actually passive aggressive, but we do come off as that quite often. <laughs> now, let me stay in your house and take my money or there will be words had. Mm. And so, so for a while, you're like, okay, this is where we're going. We're going crazy B&B or maybe we're going spirit of Christmas, kind of mm. letting strangers into your house. Yep. Yep. No, nope, yeah, and- nope, we go somewhere else. And uh, I do liked her. I did like her line of, "Well, I guess you could stay in the rec room. It's next to the kitchen, but only sometimes." Yeah, which I liked, but I'm pretty sure they've done that before. Yeah, uh, I feel like it's a very yeah. The layout of our house keeps changing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty uh, funny. I mean, mm. it doesn't make sense, of course, but it's a pretty clever referential joke to how yeah. their house always has that extra room now and then. It is a quick yeah. little nice uh, meta bit. Um, so then after that, uh, Homer arrives home. It's what's these people doing in my house? And they have a st- uh, Marge gives him a pamphlet of the bed and breakfast, and it just sits on the static shop for a while, and there's no real joke. And Homer's no. just like, "Oh, okay, neat." And then uh, he's like, "I'm annoyed at this now," and she's like, "Come on, WWBJD." Uh, oh yeah. And then I'm like, "WTFIGO." <laughs> Yeah, because then they're like, what would baby Jesus do? And it has an extended dream sequence where he sees baby Jesus learning how to run a hotel. Yep. Uh, I know that it's a thing that, like, the weird ultra... The Flanderses of reality tend to say, what Mm. would baby Jesus do? But that is is it just me or is that retardedly dumb? That's retardedly dumb. Babies don't do anything. Yeah. They drool and shit themselves. He he didn't even know he's Jesus yet. Yeah. What would baby (laughs) Jesus do? He would drool and shit himself, right? Right? Yep. Uh, Oh, man, that's what Homer should have (laughs) done. Just imagine baby Jesus drooling and shitting himself. Oh, no, Homer should have drooled and shit himself. Uh, That's what Peter Griffin would have done. Yeah. He's like, "Mm, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. (laughs) But it's one of my favorite parts in Talladega Nights where they're having the the dinner (laughs) and he's like, uh, no, Jesus is not an adult. I like to picture him as a baby. Oh, little tiny baby Jesus. Thank you for Gatorade. <laughs> but that's talking about things more funny. That's right. Like, I gotta watch yeah. Talladega Nights. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so then Bart's sitting watching Frosty the Hitman DVD and he's got like Ice Wolverine claws and he's just... Wasn't it a game? It was a game. It was Sorry. a game. It was it was a game. I'm, he was kicking its so ass. I'm bored and hate everything. I'm, I don't know if it's <laughs> okay, man. Yeah, uh, F- uh, Frosty the Hitman going through, clawing everybody and then gets to a DVD rack and literally swipes... TV like DVD like pun TV. titles at yeah. you, but a they move so quickly you can't read them, and b it go it, he, like he does it like ten times. Oh my god! Yeah. and it's like and yeah, so like he, oh. yeah, he swipes and like two to three DVDs will come, and you don't yeah you don't have enough time to read one. I had a vague glimpse; none of them were funny. Yeah, no. I, okay. So I thought, okay, you can stop now. It then went two more times. I said out loud, "You can stop." Yeah, and then they went honestly another four or five times. It's mm-hmm. Like. Really? <laughs> there were so many you can stop now moments in this episode. <laughs> yeah. They really were. Oh, and then there's another like plot thread that didn't go anywhere. Um, so all these out of towners are coming out of town and they des- uh, descend upon the church. And Reverend Lovejoy's, oh, I got to make the best sermon ever. Um, yeah, sitting there trying to write the sermon, and you're like, okay, so this is where it's going. Yep. Well, yeah, this was whole. This whole thing went nowhere, didn't it? Yeah. Nope. It felt like it was there for him to go. Ooh, this. Uh, yeah. It, he sees the people, has doubts about his sermon, goes yep. to write the yep. sermon. Yep. It does well straight away and goes. Ooh, this is black church good. Oh man, that was it. that was the gag of the bit. It, it, although it, then it kept going for another three minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, also, there is a good. There's a line I did like where he starts the sermon and is like. It's not about uh, Jesus, it's about now and about giving to each other and, uh, you know, the typical thing sermons do at Christmas. But then everyone's like stunned and having a great time and one guy runs out to a phone booth and goes, you got to, church bulletin, you got to hear this, Lovejoy's on fire. Like, <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. I like that bit, but that's um, the only time. Good I old stop the presses the, yeah. from the church bulletin. <laughs> when I was like, black, oh, this is black church good, uh... I, I did say that was the joke of the thing. It's still weirdly racist and like really on the nose to just kind of mm. drop as a punchline. I should have yeah. mentioned that before. Oh, sidebar, now that we're talking about how ugly, offensive, and racist this this was, uh, Lisa was just like, women... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Women um, just want you to shut up and listen, Millhouse. What the fuck was <laughs> that? It was uh, when a woman talks, she just wants to be heard. Which yeah. maybe in another context would have been like, you really need to just shut up and listen. But in, in this, it was like, I don't want... 
you to say anything, yeah. shut the fuck up. It, yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's like what a man man thinks a third-way feminist would write. <laughs> yeah, it's clearly like a, a shitty male writer trying to be... Trying to, was that trying to be funny? I think I it was trying to be funny. I don't know if it was be funny or edgy or insight. It was yeah. just. It sounds like something his wife yelled at him. I mean, and yeah. he just put it in the three episode. guys mm. in in a room uh, talking about feminism. But holy shit, man! I I, I, I that's the thing. I don't. It didn't land as a feminist line. It didn't land as a joke. It no. was just something that was there that feels like someone had to get something out of their system. It, yeah, it, it just felt made like someone... Lisa looking like an asshole too. That's yeah. it. That's it. Just. Oh, women are fucking assholes. Let's just let's make that. Let's do that a bit. Let's that's that's. that's I'm my, putting that on the board. That's my I'm fucking putting that on the board. Yeah. Oh, Boom. And you know what? Religious people like to have fits. How about if Rod and Todd go, Dad? Can we have a religious fit? Oh yeah. yeah. That Is that sort of a tail on from the black church? Good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that good that you're gonna yeah. have a fit. Yeah. Stop just, the presses. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I like the stop the presses gag, but that was yeah. it. Everything else was just. It's okay, we're up to Act 3 now. Thank God, can this go away already? <laughs> so all the people who have come to the Simpsons B&B are complaining and at Marge. Oh yeah, suddenly and Jesus... they've rented out like five families, even though they only had one spare room. Yeah, which is odd, but okay. Oh, and also, yeah, when they cut to Lisa in her bedroom later in the episode, there is like two families in her room and it's like, what, what, didn't you want to like keep your kids in your room and not in the room with the strangers? Oh, it's so fucking stupid. Yeah. No sense. No sense. No sense. But yeah, so they're like, uh complaining to Marge oh this eggnog is terrible and then Marge says all eggnog is terrible Woo! I like that joke but then the King Winter joke I didn't like that yeah King Winter eats his children oh, oh man that, that is the worst dumb. of the that, children's like, shows yes yeah, so your children's Christmas television is oh, stupid I remember there were some weird like oh, yeah, Christmas yeah, kit shows in the 80s there are most yeah. definitely are but that's the thing you don't have to make one up you can just find especially one especially on 2013 none of the kids watching that are going to remember any of the shitty ones from the 80s yeah and there was some weird shit going on mm-hmm. but then the whole thing kind of ends with uh, the only good thing about this place is the piano player and it goes to Grandpa Hayne playing the piano and then just people just give him tips and yep. that's like not a joke, but that's Goes the end of the scene. for 10 seconds, yeah. And you're like, what, what am I watching here? Is the joke, and Grandpa plays the piano. <laughs> <laughs> Pause for laughter. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And then they, uh, the uh, Lisa picks up the plot baton as well, and she's like, I'm going to have a story in this episode, because everyone else is. Oh, that's right. I can believe I that yeah. happened too. Yeah. yeah. So Lisa goes out shopping and uh, bumps into Ned Flanders on the street, um, who's sharing a kiosk with a makeup cart from an Arabic woman. Another and... vaguely racist sort of thing there. Yeah. Like, well, strictly all racist. It just it feels like they made her Arabic to try and be diverse. But then I, the well, so I think she also said to Lisa, no wonder you don't have a husband or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so that tied it to race, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was just weird. I think if they'd backed it up, if they'd just made her ethnic for the sake of it and then backed it up with a half-decent joke, it could have been like diversity, but because they backed it up with such a joke you can tie to race, or you know, maybe it wasn't intentional, who knows, but it just, yeah, it fell, know, it fell off. Like, yeah. Like, the whole idea of Flanders sharing a cart with someone is kind of funny. Like, yeah. surely yeah, you definitely. can, like, have, like, her, her, like, doing people's makeup yeah. be offensive to him or something. The it's... other left-handed shop should have been the other half of the cart. <laughs> no, it should have been the right-handed shop. Yeah. And, like, yeah. <laughs> and the guy's like, I, were, I, built, uh, I got a shop just for right-handers. What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, but like, she starts off okay. She's like, oh, this is the best cream ever. Nothing beats mole uh, cart cream. Yeah, yeah. Like, best cream ever. Nothing beats mole cart cream. Kim Kardashian uses this one. Mm, yeah, and It's like, yeah. that's a fi- fine start. We've all had those people flog us in the you know, oh, mid-mole yeah. section. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> all those mid-mole women telling me I could look as good as Kim Kardashian. <laughs> no, no, I had a really good, awkward tra- one with that, where this woman's like, oh, you know, you can get something nice for your wife. I'm like, not married. It's like, oh, for your girlfriend. Nope. Uh, for your mom. Like, I was this time to just go, she, 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 she died. But I'm like, no, please leave me alone. Two strikes and you're already out. I'm already in another store, lady. Could you please go? And she's just following me around. Your cousin. No, God damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, this starts off a, a whole storyline of Lisa um, uh, buying presents for everybody. And she buys really selfish gifts, like things that she'd like. Well, I think it's things she thinks they should like rather yeah. than things they would. Because yeah. she's there looking for Bart and she looks at like the joke store. And actually, there were a couple of joke store names. They're all kind of funny, but I can't yeah. remember them now. Yeah. Too um, many sign gags in yeah. episode, man. Um, it was like... Uh, there was like pranks. Uh, prank prank United is like a bank joke. Yeah, uh, mm. Boogers, Bath and Beyond. 
Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, and that was all right. Bit puke, vomit, emporium, or something. Yeah, yeah. Something, like that. Uh, something funny. It, w- it wasn't great, but it was enough. Yeah, and yeah, she goes, oh, "I'll see. I've got the perfect gift for him." And then cut to the Simpsons Christmas morning when everyone's unwrapping presents, and um, but got her something really that she would like the Angela Angelica button that felt really rose. out of character for Bart as well. I mean, yeah, he's like got he her only, something great. He does lovely things after learning the valuable lesson, you know. Yeah. Um, after getting the soul back in his cells is what watch my jig to buy a ocean thing a jog. Sure. Um I this is really out of left field for he hasn't really been in the episode actually. He's been pretty No, they've been too busy passing the plot baton all over yeah. the place before to win. Yeah, I guess he was spent yeah. too much time, you know, searching for magic wands. Doing research about exactly which one magic wand he has she hasn't got from the yeah. book yeah. series. Like very in depth for Bart and for that not to be the plot point either. It just makes yeah. no sense. And it's annoying because it's another parallel import joke, the Angelica Button, Harry Potter sort of thing. But they've used it before, so I do like the continuity. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, like you said, coming out of no left field, no real reason for it, um, for him to be buying her this gift. Mm-hmm. Just and set then, up so that she can sacrifice later on, right? Yeah, that's, that's so dumb. And I've issue, I just thought of issue with that, so I'll talk about it when we get there. Mm. Um, but yeah, she, she got him a copy of Treasure Island and he's mm. all like, why Wait. on earth would you get me a book? And she's like, I don't even think she says it's about pirates and I thought you'd like it. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that would at least be defendable. But um, Pirates and sword fight and stuff. Yeah. And he didn't want to read it back when he had a book assignment on it for Bart's Gets and F back <laughs> in season two. Why the fuck would he want it now? Jesus Christ, Lisa, pay attention to details. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, Lisa, like sort of, yeah, bought other people gifts that they didn't really like. Homer got radish seeds, and was, um, there, was there more? Uh, binky did... patches for Maggie because yeah, apparently in um you yeah. gotta go cold go, turkey. Yeah, yeah and sometimes that's hard, so you gotta go on a patch. I have no idea. I didn't yeah. even know what that was. was the just... fuck were they thinking, really? And I mean, what were you thinking, man? <laughs> Sorry. You, you, yeah, this is the uh, Billy and the Clonosaurus episode <laughs> of Simpsons. Seriously. And yeah, and it's all for um, just Bart rips up the book, throw, uh, throws it in the trash can, and then not only that, he's he's there burning it with Millhouse. Yeah, but they're not burning it for any reason. He's just burning it. It's like if he was burning it so he could roast marshmallows. <laughs> no, or... he got the idea from the berry stained bears book that he happened to have there at the time as well. Uh... And it, another Powerport joke. Uh... And yeah, also, yeah, Lisa can come back and goes, oh, I know what you were trying to tell me. And here's a Kindle that you can get apps on. And he's like, how did you afford that? And she's like, I sold the gift you got me, which is my issue. So Bart throws, so Kindle is what, like 300 bucks? Yeah. So Bart somehow bought Lisa the the Angelica button and robe and wand, which is about in resale value worth $300. Mm. He sold his soul six times. Okay, well, it's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, he had to split it like a, a Horcrux from <laughs> Angelica Button. And, yeah. you know. My point is this whole episode, they're like, oh, we're too poor this year to really have a proper Christmas. Yeah, solid so, point. Forgot that was a point of the episode. Yeah, yeah well, it's because it changed points like four times. Actually, that's being generous. It changed points about six times. And yeah. so, of course, you forgot that was the point at, some, at one point. I actually just... really liked Flanders coming out and being like, guys, maybe I should teach you the meaning of Christmas. <laughs> I, I, I was sitting there thinking, Bart is being little too insightful with mm. his like did you buy a present that you thought I wanted did you buy a present that you thought I should have wanted if I wanted to be a better person and da, 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 da. he didn't I don't know that's as if he's good as if he reads subtext on that level no. yeah I mean he, he might have gotten things text. but he, could, he that, that was a really fleshed out idea to have put into words yeah. like that yeah yeah felt out of character and then uh, Flanders turns up with the nightcap and the lantern was he holding a lantern sure very Why Christmassy not? Christmas oh. lantern oh, oh. And then them cutting away from that because they got bored with that storyline is just indicative of yeah. this episode as a whole. You know, mm-hmm. you know, this is totally. I can't be bothered doing the the. I can't be bothered doing the, the moral here. You just pretend it happened. Let's do something else. Well, it doesn't even like because uh, so they have been like building up Marge getting pissed off at the families mm-hmm. and their neediness and their requests and whatever. Yep. And then it comes to the end and they're like, "Oh, Marge, just one more thing," and she's like, "What? What? What?" We're going to carol for you, la da da da, and then they fucking do two songs. Yeah. And it's like, should have been, we're sorry we were such total dicks. Yeah. 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 We are sorry we're such total dicks. Yep. And. Yep. But so they get partway through the second song and then the credits, and you're like, oh, thank God. 
and then nope they cut away from the credits and then t- do the songs <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah yeah they should have had like you know them doing all the no- things to make marge have a nice christmas they yeah. bring her the hot cocoa they get mm-hmm. her in the chair and get her some pre- slippers yeah nope. instead they keep fucking singing and then the actual credits do come up and then it's a series of license plate gags. Yeah, because my, when Marge was driving through before, she's like, look at all these out-of-state licenses from all That's these right. tourists and then lists a bunch of them and then later on you get to see them. Wasn't Isn't that what you wanted? To see the the, the jokes we said before? What I wanted goes... I just wanted to find... Uh, it was written by Ton, Don Payne. I don't think we... Don... You got some splaining to do. You really do. Oh, he co-wrote the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. (laughs) Uh, Uh, He also co-wrote both Thor movies. (laughs) Congratulations, Don. You really made it big. Yep. Time for the question air. I'm surprised the sentient calculator has that name. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, you were saying? It is time for the question... No, I'm going to take that again. It is time for the question air. Ooh, basic. For you out there. Play count. How many times do you think you're saying this one? One one too many. <laughs> so one? Yep. <laughs> I'm with stupid. One too many. Yeah, I actually don't think um, I've seen this one. Be- w- words <laughs> hurt, Sorry, Trey. Beach. Words hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with the shirt, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's wearing a shirt that says yes. Sorry, you guys. You probably didn't get that. Mm. For the band, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Check out the song Roundabout. Um, yeah, I don't actually think I've seen this one before, which is surprising. Like the whole time mm. I'm watching it, I'm like, I am not familiar with this. Actually, maybe you just blocked it out. I, I yeah, <laughs> maybe you just skipped ahead. I think if I was you and I just put it on in some sort of stone stupor, I would not put up with this shit. Up with this, I will not put. <laughs> um, so did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? No, oh. no. <laughs> like pretty much every character is kind of off point. I suppose yeah. Marge is a little bit on because she's very giving and people take advantage of that. But Homer was just ultra stupid and barely there. Bart was all, I know exactly what's going on. Don't Even have the to way Marge lesson. gets cranky is out of character. Yeah, for her. yeah. The way she, usually she starts gets doing this really like subversive shit where she's like, my uncle died in the bed that you're sleeping in. It's really like yeah. spiky. Which is, I, I want to bring that up because it's like, that's the fam, one of the kids' beds most likely, or it's a spare yeah. bed. It's, or, or it's, or in it's the like house. an inflatable mattress on the know. floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, appara- know, apparently one of the dudes is sleeping with Homer Lincoln style as well. What, mm. what the heck? Is that like, no, you know like what? I, I, I don't want to so know. So like on like 90 degree angles? Mm. I don't or, know. If you know what I is mean. Is there something about Abe Lincoln, the wrestler, who was like undefeated male wrestler, I'm pretty sure? You didn't know that about Abe Lincoln? Dude, he once laid down a challenge being like, I'm the, I'm the head bull in this here, Cal Lick. Any of y'all want to step up to me, I will fuck your shit right up. Direct quote. Yep. Why? The Surprisingly fuck? word to word. Dude, he's like nine feet tall and it's a crazy muscly. Yeah, but I know, but I'm anymore. just asking why were you not involved in the Daniel Day Lewis Steven Spielberg Lincoln? <laughs> oh. Yeah, my accent was a little too oldie world. No, just, just for the writing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's suddenly uh, issuing throwdowns. Did they do his did they do his wrestling throwdown? I actually did not see it. So. Ah, me neither. Maybe they did. Um, <laughs> and he's all like, I'm gonna fuck yeah, all no. your shit right up. And the crowd was just like silent. They're just like, well, it's Lincoln. There's no way we can take him. Yeah, no, no, coming dude, to the <laughs> stage. Towering over them, shooting lasers out of his <laughs> eyes. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> now coming to the ring, it's Abe the Emancipator Lincoln. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that's true facts, though. Yeah, no, I know. He's, he, he was a big dude and strong as fuck, so yeah. apparently he used to run a pub and just throw drunks out. So, I mean, Homer and his wife and the random dude, Lincoln style. <laughs> Giggity. Yeah. Wackiness. Um, uh, everything wacky was kind of... The intro scene was like Intro scene, wacky. but it was all like the television stuff, so... Yeah. The stupid Frosty game was stupid and wacky, but stupid. It's a game so within yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. They, Homer's extended fantasy of Baby Jesus was but wacky, a but a fantasy, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's yeah, not like, uh, remember when Baby Jesus cut the, cut, uh, ran the hotel? Bought yeah. clams. Uh, Springfield being the only place in America to have snow is pretty wacky. Yeah. I mean, global warning, serious issue, da-da-da-da-da. 
Um, Talk to your but, congressman today. Yeah, for real. Although, having said that, why would Springfield be the only town in the country to both have a nuclear plant and a, fi- uh, and a tire fire? Does that seem unlikely? That seems unlikely to me. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of unlikeliness in this episode. Also, if they have the constant tire fire and the nuclear plant, wouldn't they be constantly, constantly snowing? snow? Yeah. Boom! <laughs> in your face, Don the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. I hope he comes to work on like Monday and people are like, hey, you're a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, Callaway! <laughs> no, it makes sense. He should have boob written on his face. <laughs> <laughs> That's 8008 for everybody <laughs> playing out there. I'm just on a roll with these calculator <laughs> jokes. Um, how about the heart? <laughs> what am I asking this for? They go for heart uh, moments. They do try. Uh, Flanders walking out and saying, I don't I teach you kids about the meaning of Christmas. And I, then they're like, you know what? Fuck heart. I don't give it a shit. I'm moving on. I'm sick of this heart crap. Yeah. Mm. After Flanders had, Flanders had that line, I honestly do not remember what happened. Singing. Oh, well, that's why I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it goes for the moments with Lisa and with Marge. And Lisa's the, presence, yeah. I guess. But they yeah. don't have any emotional build-up. They just announce this shit is happening and they don't resolve anything really. Oh, it's, oh, my heart hurts for this. Also, episode. yeah, they yeah. weren't hard gifts. No, there was... I mean, that scene of Lisa at the shops being like, oh, I want to do something lovely for my family. I'm going to buy them lovely presents and everyone's going to be so happy. And then what she sees as lovely gifts is not what they see as lovely gifts. So that moves away from it. But she there, she was there with pure intentions to do something <laughs> lovely. Intentions. I can have those. <laughs> okay, okay. That was that was a heart moment, by the way. Let's ignore Beach. <laughs> it's, it's usually best. It's what my parents do. So yes or no, um, are you not going to watch this episode again? Don't you double negative. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you build that trap. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. Do when- you not want to never see this episode again? Correct. <laughs> Am I incorrect in saying none of this? <laughs> um, I, I do, I do, I, I do I not. I would rather not, yes. Let's rank this thing. Failure. 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 Oh, yeah, by the way, the Simpsons Index works with a six-point ranking scale that starts down the bottom at failure. And today, that's where it ends. <laughs> but um, for future episodes, maybe if they're a bit meh, they get participant, and then good episodes get, like, bronze or silver or gold, or the best get cubic zirconia, but not this one. No, so far from cubic. Yeah. It's just, it's a complete mess. It's one of those ones that I'm it's, not offended by how bad it is or angry about it. Well, I'm actually, no, I got angry I got about quite it. angry. Yeah. It took this a while for me to get there. So, so, so down in the mm. filth, it can no longer see the glinting light of cubic zirconia. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, above. Like I said, I was bored and then I was frustrated and then I was mad. And it's just, it's such a mess and it's not funny. And all most of the characters are off point and it just changes direction so many bloody times. Yeah. And any, any one of those could have been a better, you know, plot line. No, the, seriously, the people with ADD have long flicked over to and started watching Frasier right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's do such a bomb episode. Oh, we should. Not. No, because let's, let's watch Frasier pretending that he is such a bomb. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Quick, do a Frasier impression. Who's your best Frasier impression? Oh, really, Niles? Oh, that was pretty good. No, that was. Not. <laughs> not bad. I'm afraid so. Every time I'm afraid so. we say goodbye, I wonder why a little. Mm-hmm. Oh. Every gotta, time. Very well, I will send you to heaven before I send you to hell. <laughs> and a two and a three, and we sail the ocean, ocean blue, and us all six ships of duty. We are sober men, men and true, and attentive to our duty. duty. <laughs> this was wonderful, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Merry Christmas, one and all. We are going to go to our teens episode now, which is... um. Guys, I've got two in mind. Either Kill the Gator and Run, mm-hmm. which is the Simpsons go on spring break and make Kid Rock episode, mm-hmm. or Beyond Blunderdome, where Homer and Mel Gibson um, write, uh, do a recut of Mel Gibson's remake of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Mm. I think we should do that one, man. I th- the other one just... Melly Gibson's? Yeah. The Melly Gibson's. Kid Rock? Do we have to do Kid Rock? <laughs> My name is... Not today, Kid. man. I've gone through too much. <laughs> Uh, you are not in the mood for bar with the bar. <laughs> yes, and we will be back. Don't you go anywhere. Bye. Or do if you want. And we are back. And we just watched an episode from the teens era. From the early teens, in fact. 
Uh, it was season 11, episode 1, Beyond Blunderdome, first aired in September of 99. In this episode, Mel Gibson is worried that his movie isn't violent enough and too boring, so he gets um, consulting advice from Homer, flies mm-hmm. him out to Hollywood, and they hang out in Hollywood and hang out with Melly Gibsons. Guys, what'd you think? Hmm. I quite enjoyed it, I think. Yeah, I think. It's weird. It's one I enjoy a little... Like Watching it this time, it's not as joke-heavy as I seem to remember, but it's kind of got a fun plot. Yeah. Especially with the first times when you see it, and you're like, where's this going to go? Mm, Tell me yeah. more, Simpsons. Yeah. It's a fun romp. Yeah. But, yeah, it... It, mm, it, it had yeah. its problems, though. It had its problems. It wasn't perfect. Mm. Um, the one thing that I noticed, it was making a lot of extremely dated references. Whoa, whoa, whoa. An episode from 1997 making dated references? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, but uh, yeah. His directorial follow-up to Braveheart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kids, Braveheart was a movie that your grandparents saw. It was pretty funny. And they liked the it, yeah. yeah. it was great. And Mel Gibson, he never gets in trouble with the police. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, this is 1997, Melly Gibson. No, 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 no. Nine, 99. Hey, guys, no, this is whatever year this is. <laughs> yeah. That was a great way to keep it contemporary. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. I, uh, I, I get a lot, yeah, when Norman says that, it's like, I can't tell if that's just to keep it contemporary or because he's not supposed to know. Or yep, both. Yep. Yeah. As I said on the, on the last one, we often start with them watching TV and we start with a TV ad for a, uh, featuring a bunch of kids dying in smog. Mm. And then it's like, the electric car, test drive one today and get a free gift. Yep, and so Homer's like, come on, family, we're going out and getting My a car. My kids deserve to see me get a free gift. I, do, right. I really like that line. Uh, just as a quick side note, uh, my dad really hates the term free gift. Really? If it's a gift, it's already free. Yeah, he's oh. just doubling down. It's like ATM machine. Yeah, true, true. You just call them at machines. Much easier. <laughs> Got a vague Star Wars vibe to it. I know. You know I could get well, on board. Yeah. See, why are we not doing that? Get on board the at machine. <laughs> That sounds like a sex thing. <laughs> that sounds like Star Wars. So, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the electric car was so quiet that the way it makes conversation really easy, and it's got a host of other problems too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I, I did like the joke. Yeah. Um, it's good for the environment. What kind of mint? Yeah, well, yeah. That was, yeah. That was fun. And even, but Lisa's sort of. Uh, oh, I'm so glad this is good for the trees. And the, oh, you're doing this for the free gift, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we the, kind of already done it. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. My kids deserve me to see. So, nah, my kids. Uh, my kids deserve <laughs> to see me get a free gift. I guess the gag there was sort of how cynical she was, how she could pick mm. him. You know what? It should have gone. This is great for the environment. Ooh, what kind of mint? Ooh, what condiment? <laughs> Double down on that one. Um. Could have been a real saucy joke. Yeah, yeah. So they take the test drive and... Oh, saucy joke. I just, damn, it wasn't paying me. Beach, beach. I just didn't think there was a joke there. And like, wait a second, joke detector is blinking. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> did Elliot speak? He did. You oh. got one new message. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only got one bar of signal, but it's registering. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they take the test drive and uh, naturally Homer assumes electric car can just go underwater and drives off the dock uh, where he electrocutes some um, dolphins, dolphins and, and, mermaids. and then some mermaids. Like, and some divers. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, divers and mermaids at the same time. Just, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think much of it, but I guess I didn't hate it. It's just an odd bit. Like, wait, yeah. why are there mermaids all of a sudden? Yeah, Could but have been a lot of other things. Could have been just the divers or an octopus or Blinky or, you know. Or why is that bit happening at all? Yeah. Why Why are they doing that? The, just the... has to wreck the car, right? It doesn't have to wreck the car. You could have had a fun time and returned it safely. Well, yeah, that's it. Because then the next scene is, yeah, smashed her. Uh, he's at the dealer dropping off the car. Yeah, I feel like they've done similar bits where, like, he goes to the car place for mm. the free gift, nabs the gift, and then runs. They literally have when he's oh, like... Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Count Homer, how do you think? And what advantages would this have over a trade, which I could also afford? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that whole scene was irrelevant. Is irrelevant a strong word? Um, I mean, it got it was a means to an end, but it did feel it like... It just a bit... got them free movie tickets. Yeah. yeah. To... I like that they, they made a point out of it. Like, they, they kind of poked fun at, at it being at a, the... just a means to an end, where they cut straight to the bed. Yeah. And they're like, you yeah. know, normal, in a normal episode, we would have just opened that ticket straight away. Yeah, yeah, seems yeah, like we should uh, open that envelope and see what our prize was. Hmm. Well, but we didn't. Guess we'll do it now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, part of me wants to hate it because of how long they drag it out, but it was uh, funny and it worked in yeah. funny steps. Oh, well, it's a lot like the um, 
when Homer's like, well, here we are at Brad Goodman's seminar. Well, mm. yeah, we know, Dad. You told us that on the way over here. I'm just re- reiterating what we said before. What yeah. an odd thing to yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, and they sort of do that with Marge later, but we'll get to there. Yeah. Here uh, I like it because it, it's like, oh, we've transitioned to a here. Uh, well, guess we should have just opened that prize before. Hmm. We'll just do it now. Yep. And Marge is getting all wet because um, racist ass <laughs> Melly Gibson's in this movie. And uh, it wasn't racist ass Melly Gibson's yet. Yeah. No. Regular Gibson. Yeah. yeah. Regular ass Melly Gibson's. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so they go to a, um, the movie by Mel Gibson. It's a preview screening, it's a test screening there. Um, gonna hand out cards afterwards to get their opinions on the movie, mm-hmm. and and um and everyone seems to enjoy it, despite the absence of Gl- Flubber Glavin. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I like someone finally questioning Glavin. <laughs> <laughs> Which um yeah was it's it's such a stupid joke, but it does come back around when they doing the cards as well. Mm. They did this weird bit, sort of like. Introducing the producers and the execs as like like celebrities. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, the assistant pr- pr- premier producer of the of the the marketing division. Woo! Oh my god! And Flan is like, should have brought my camera. Yeah. How, how's the popcorn? Needs salt. I didn't get it. <laughs> uh, uh, the thing there is the popcorn needs salt. What's the popcorn needs salt? Okay, there's this stuff called popcorn, and it's like when you get <laughs> corn kernels and heat them up until they pop, and then to make it taste better, you add put salt. Fascinating. Um, no, but uh, is it a thing that uh, is it just like a network executives making notes joke? Or? Yeah, that's what I take away from it. Yeah, that it's you know, well, we like what you've done here, but we think could you add more salt? Yeah, that'll really yeah. get the Latino yeah. demographic. See if they said it in that tone, not that like um, we spelled it out more. Um, I feel like they were the way they were saying it was like it was a throw a, a throwback gag. Mm. Hey everybody, what was network producers say all the time? <laughs> Need <laughs> salt. <laughs> It'll never yeah. come it'll become and as catchy. And all the audience is like, "Hey, <laughs> you said that line we love." It'll never be as catchy as that's all the mustard in the house. <laughs> 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 and yeah, so Mel Gibson's the whole time ta- there the whole time and um he goes, oh, I'm going to sneak out before the movie going public, see me. And he sets off the fire alarm. I'm going to sneak uh, out and have a piss in the gutter. Behind a dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, just before that, you do have the line I like, which is, um, how did you get here from, from Hollywood so fast? Oh, John Travolta flew me in his jet. Now I have to have a move next weekend. He's specifically waiting till we're in the air to ask me. <laughs> it's a very Seinfeldian bit. I know, and I love that. But just to jump ahead, I hated every other bit of John Travolta joke in this. Yeah, it was like, you said you'd help me move. Jeez. It was just way too exaggerated. Like yeah. that was a great shit Travolta, by the yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel good that that's what I was aiming for. Yeah, I wasn't aiming for good Travolta. Yeah, and I love. Yeah, he's just awkward, and, he, and yeah, Mel Gibson's. Everyone's noticed him. He's like, uh, "Hi, everybody." <laughs> Hi, Mister Gibson. Very yeah. good callback to the yeah. old Doctor Nick. I sp- mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I thought that was a little hammy. It was, like, but some of us like ham mm. with cheese on a sandwich mm. with a pickle. <laughs> um, then he like dry humps up on Marge yeah no, um, he, he goes there he's like well, I'll be reading yours personally <laughs> oh he did he did the ra- he, kiss he, the he, hand mm. and it's like a does yeah. he or does he I can't remember I think he rolls. I think he does mm. and then yeah Homer frustrated from the crowd barges through and uh, and I like how his anger is, at Mel Gibson is do you have a pencil <laughs> Yeah, like, a yeah. Mm, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, then it cuts to yeah, the executives reading out all the cards and I kind of like it as a plot point that Mr. G- uh, Mr. Gibson, why am I giving him any respect? <laughs> um M- Melly Melly shitfuck. Um <laughs> All right. All right. All right. This is pre Melly shitfuck. Yeah. Um I quite liked that Everyone signs their card with their character name. Yeah. The sea captain leaves it for ours. Who calls himself the sea captain? <laughs> and Bumblebee Bumblebee man. Guy. Yeah. Um, I did like it as a plot point that uh, Mel... Fuck, I almost called him Mr. again. I I mean, do you Gibson. have respect for Mel Gibson? Because it comes up a lot. You're like Freudian slipping. you really yeah. dropping it, man. I yeah. mean, guy's got a, a, a quite a wide body of work, man. Lethal Weapon 1 and 2. Amazing sure. movies. Mm-hmm. Um... Braveheart. Mm. He was in Braveheart. The Road Warrior. Yeah. Road Warrior. Yeah. Claim to fame. Mm. Uh, if you ever want a fun Millie Gibson story, so in Scotland at the William Wallace Memorial, they unveiled it after Braveheart had come whoa, out. Whoa, whoa. You can't tell me this now. You've got to tell me this if I ever want a fun... <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it now so it's on record. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, so I can come back can and listen to it, to it if I ever want this one. This is what I'm not telling you. I'm telling the recorder. Uh, God, it's not. <laughs> the only person that listens. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I would take my fun fact and go home, but I'm not going to, just to spite you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but yeah, the William Wallace Memorial in Scotland uh, came out after Braveheart, and so the statue actually looks like Mel Gibson. And uh, <laughs> But Scots, being the Scottish people they are, were so pissed, they continuously smashed the statue. Really? So to protect it, they had to put a uh, like a cage around it. So there's a statue of Mel Gibson with oh, freedom no. written underneath it. Oh, no. It's locked in a cage. Oh, no. You can look this up. It's completely true. I've seen it. No, that, that is hilarious. See, I told you it was a fun fact, you fucking dicks. <laughs> Not just fun, but funny. <laughs> yeah, so I like it as a plot point that uh, Mel Gibson uh, had uh, sentiments similar to Homer's in this one. Yeah, it was like, I didn't even shoot anybody. Yeah, yeah. All I do is talk. And so Mel Gibson turns up at the Simpsons Pain house. pulls up and Homer's like, ah, get the door. <laughs> yeah. Um, he does kind of do the, 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 the fun, stupid, macho thing of like, see this ring? It means that I own her and she's my property. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Harking back to that last episode where women were being objectified. Yeah. And- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in this, it's done the context of how dumb and stupid is he to make that sentence. I didn't like that, really, but I liked... Um, I enjoyed its irony. <laughs> I like the one where Mel's like, "Oh, you, um, Marge, you're undermining Homer," and, he, and Homer's like, oh, "She's always doing that." <laughs> it was more about the delivery. Yeah, it was like she's always doing that, Mel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like my new best buddy needs really to hear my problems. Really cozying up, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, the uh, the actor closes out with a, a terrible John Travolta impression. Let's all do one now. You said you'd help me move. Jeez, Mr. Carter. Oh, no, Gibson, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was more of the sandwich, but I left it behind this. No, it's really bad. This is harder to do than I thought. He's, he's good. Pops yeah. the beach. you got to start with the G's. <laughs> <laughs> and then you move on to the H. <laughs> My favorite line was in this one, the one that Marco Miniman turns into like a blast beat. Oh, my stomach is filled with vomiting butterflies. I believe that's in like 1916 to all you progressive <laughs> wow. metalheads out there. Nice. Yeah. Go, go look it up. It's like cartoon drum loops and it's by a drummer called Marco Miniman who takes samples of cartoons like from this episode. My stomach is filled with vomiting butterflies and creates drum beats around, around them being uh, looped. It's yeah. amazing. I like it because you did used to have a uh, as the example for seven eight purple monkey dishwasher. Oh yeah, well, I don't purple think that was monkey from dishwasher, me. purple monkey dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. Now in the progressive metal theory index. Do we do 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 we do? It's already in our time. <laughs> That's true. I forgot about that. So yeah. this is where a bunch of really dated jokes are happening. Robert Downey Jr. is uh, filming a movie where he's in a police shootout. Where's the cameras? Yeah, and it's like yeah. that was a lot less relevant about fourteen Marvel movies ago. <laughs> For real, man, he cleaned his act up so long ago, generations ago now. Nice, uh, nice, nice to have you back, Robbie. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. were worried about you for a yeah. little bit, man, but uh, you seem to do it well. Dude's, yeah, man, dude's cleaned himself up hardcore, mm. uh, a- and he's cleaned up as well. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not doing them Iron Man appearances for free. <laughs> Uh, then there was the site where that the famous cafe was. Then there was uh, next to the you know the famous Chinese theater. There was like a Chinaman's theater or something. Yeah, it's man's Chinese theater. And then Chinese and then, man's theater. Yeah, and that, I, li- that, I like it for wordplay. I know yeah. you've got the ooh is that racist face on, but I yeah. enjoy I enjoy wordplay. <laughs> I like wordplay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it was like racist, it could, like, but it, because but, it was a little cheap-looking place next to the big rich place. That's yeah, that's where it's it delves into that territory. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. I don't know. On the on the food index as well, we ate from Miss Peaches tonight. Which oh my god, they deliver now. Oh. How fucking good was that? Yeah. So so guys, I know that whoever is listening to this, you're in Texas. <laughs> order from Miss Peaches because it tastes just like you're back in America. <laughs> <laughs> It really does, man. That that uh, fried chicken, man, that brought me right back to Louisiana. Mm, so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, like 10 goods. Yeah. 10 goods out of great. <laughs> that still sounds less. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were going for like, yeah, but um, no, 11 out of 10. Come on. That, that was just, yeah. It was so good I couldn't even eat the fries. No, it's that's right. It scored a perfect 7 out of 5. <laughs> Damn you, seven fives! <laughs> but um, yeah. So Sydney ciders go down to Miss Peaches in uh, Newtown, uh, or get them home delivered. 
but go there because it's a really uh, uh, funky restaurant. Right, get them home delivered so when we're there, no one else is there and we can get a seat. That's true. God, you always do this. <laughs> I encourage people to go to the places we want to hang out at. Bastard. <laughs> And then they're like, oh my god, it's the Simpsons Index guys. And we're oh, like, again. I, no. I just want to hang out with my discreetly pregnant Brazilian <laughs> girlfriend. I'm sick of signing gorgeous people's bosoms. <laughs> Such ample bosoms. My name isn't that long. Why would I even say bosoms? <laughs> <laughs> because it's fun. Yeah. It's, it's, it's delightfully gender neutral. You never know whose gorgeous <laughs> bosoms you're going to sign. Bosoms. Read the bosom line again, Dad. <laughs> Bosoms. <laughs> um, yeah, and another dated reference. Oh, that's where Hugh Grant ooh, filmed nine months. Oh, yeah. God. Even worse yeah. than that prostitute thing I was thinking about before. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit much. Um, so they make another bunch of dated references here. Here, that uh, mansion is owned by the dog from Frasier, and it's like, oh, that makes me sad because Eddie's totally dead now. Two Eddies are dead now. Mm. Oh, there were two Eddies. That's yeah. right. And also, oh, and here's Ellen DeGeneres and Anne Heche. Yeah, We're lesbians. Yeah, there was no reason to put that there except, like, so that we recognized. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, it was around the time where Ellen broke ground for being the first out um, yep. sitcom star in her show and in real life. And, like, what are they saying here that, they, that she was walking around going, lesbian, lesbian, like... I don't know, I mean... They're not really even it's saying not anything. They're not making a point. No. They're just like... There's a thing I saw. That's a thing I saw that in the movie the other day. So I'm going to point my finger at it. Yeah, no, I, th- I think it's more. It's like, yeah, it's a it's a non-point point. There's nothing there. It's like you walk into a room and someone's just pointing at a magazine. You're like, what? It's Ellen DeGeneres. Like, yeah, that's my point. <laughs> Look, it's a magazine. <laughs> Look, are you looking? You know that bit in IT crowd was just pointing at the dead fly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I will say comes one of one of the best parts in the entire episode, uh, which is. Homer's well, you, pitching. You want to change the main dog, the main villain into a dog? It's like, how will we even show that? Well, all you have to do is play this music. Da, 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 and show the dog doing this with shifty eyes and people will suspect the dog. Yep. I liked it. It's stupid. And it's something that you can reference back to in real life. Well, out it of started off with, oh, this boring intro bit should be in fast forward. <laughs> it's so much funnier with all the little characters going. <laughs> and then we need a scene where you try on different kinds of hats. Yep. To yep, show people your yeah. playful side. Musical <laughs> montage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, Mr. Gibson does shoot down all Homer's ideas. He's like, you know, this is a shit idea. Musical yeah. hats, you're, you're retarded. That's, that's awful. Mm. What have I done here? Yeah. Yeah. Even more respect for the Ill- illustrious Mr. Gibson. Mm-hmm. Catches his attention, though. Mel Gibson's about to say, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm kicking you out. And, yep. Um, yep. No, he's and says, like, here's uh, the most boring bit of the movie. No, he's like, uh, I'll pay. Oh, sorry, maybe this was a mistake. Uh, let me pay for your bus fare home. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he has a roll of money in his hand again. That's like the third time he's done that. Oh, we forgot to mention that the very first time Mel Gibson was, en- uh, was, was mentioned in the show, it was like, handsome and charming Mel Gibson, who's been named Man of the Year and the world's sexiest man by three different magazines. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da, yeah. Da. It wasn't quite as on the nose as the Gaga or the Elon Musk episode, but mm-hmm. yeah, it was a bit. Um, yeah, it, it was. There was a lot of ass kissing going. There were it like some like, subtle yeah. jabs at him. They in were this working one. through the contractual stipulations, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, keeping the ratio of ass kissing to self-deprecating joke, like yeah. Yep, because so, there are a couple of quick jabs, but nothing as heavy as they laid on, you know, mm. other guests. Yeah, so they decide to turn the filibuster scene into a big shootout scene. And I noticed something here when they um, show the uh, the new cut to the Hollywood producers. Homer goes, here comes two. Yeah. They did this joke in Natural Born Kisses where Grandpa's watching the Casablanca alternate ending. <laughs> yeah, he does too. So, I, I, do I don't they? know. I think it's, yeah. so it's just a family thing. Yeah. I, the, um, it Here's might be going, just a throwback. That was actually really funny. I was like, ha, it's so funny. Yep. No, uh, it is funny. And like, I, if it's a callback, that's fine. And like, before that, we do have the line of, now where is that kid with my latte? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime yep, any, yep. I'm ever given a position of power, that's my first line. Also, there was needless name dropping. Uh, uh, Stanford product- prison experiment showed that... Um, given the power the students would always bully the kids into getting them latte sorry go on that was pretty funny i like that uh there was some strangely needless product placement when they're like "Ooh, this minivan's nice is this a toyota hilux no it's a dodge prius or something 
That was a bit odd. I don't know if it's placement, but it's like, why throw that in there then? Yeah, well, I mean, saying Toyota when it wasn't a Toyota, that's got to be some sort of nod. And then they were like, oh, no, it's a Dodge Matter Lab. And, to- and Homer was like, nice. You Hollywood really know how to live. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Wish I could afford one of these charming and yet uh, e- Robust economic vehicles. Mm. Uh, so, what did you guys think of the whole shootout scene as well? I think it was full of symbolism. He was <laughs> mad. I am the president of the United States of America, <laughs> I and I demand to know what's, what's going, going on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was well animated and everything. It was and artful in its badness. Yeah. I mean, yeah. clearly that's what they were going for as well. So you got to kind of take it like, with a nod. Sure. Can you imagine watching a serious drama the whole way through and then that's the final scene? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the end of Sophie's... Cho- no, I need like a courtroom drama instead, right? Uh, to no, kill a no. mockingbird. You get to the end of Mockingbird. Sophie's choice would work because she'd be like, which one of your children will live and which one do I... <laughs> well, they're both gone now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so are you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That that's the that's the killer one liner. Yeah, mm. rips out the child's spine, <laughs> hurls it through the Nazi. It explodes. Yeah, Meryl Streep gets an Oscar. <laughs> I, well, yeah, it's Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, imagine if she did like a fucking hard R action movie, like <laughs> as if I, I'm I've got a hard R just thinking about it. <laughs> the sea captain gave it four hard R's. <laughs> God, I would watch that. I would for real. Set, for she real like Van Damme that. snaps people's necks and shit. This sounds amazing, yeah. Mrs. Streep. Please get Just on board. Get on it. I yeah. I will work tirelessly on that script <laughs> for pro bono just to see it, just to buy a ticket. The shot of her face as she grits her teeth and then snaps the neck and the blood splatter across her t- her face. Ah, oh. oh, it's gonna be amazing. Stick with tip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, she yeah. T- she should totally have a boob out as well. <laughs> Oh, man, the classic, like, shirt ripped across <laughs> yep. one slide. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, anyway, yeah, the shootout scene, yeah, it, it was ultimately funny and, like, purposefully over um, the top and ridiculous when he decapitates the president and then the ki- orphan kids burst out of the <laughs> other room, drag <laughs> yeah. him off, and then he flicks the coin onto the president's eye. No, it's like his senator badge. Which it's I- the sheriff badge, yeah. yeah. I love the the grip and you open and then it says the end. That's really funny. Yeah. Um. It's it, 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 all the tropes are there. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, um, Homer and Mel wink at each other in the theater. Oh yeah. Homer's face is so weird. Yeah, um, because Homer managed to insert himself in the movie. Yeah. The press. That was great as well. Though. Yeah. Of course, Homer wink, inserts himself in the movie. The press wink is fine, but it's when they're yeah. winking at each other. And, and then he throws a modern AK forty seven or something. <laughs> no, it's yeah. an M seventeen or something in, into the into the. Uh, I'm thinking fine. That's a M fourteen Mark B. I, I think you'll find you're... You, it's not... I'm actually wrong. It's an M16, Mark B. It's M16. Oh, thank God. Mark you B. Because the Mark A jammed all the time. Loser. I only know that M, M16 bit because of uh, Vietnam movies. So. Mm. I really liked um when like the judge was banging the gavel and so he throws the fire extinguisher <laughs> under yeah. the gavel. Boom. Boom. Blowing up the fucking White House. Uh, Lady Liberty goes flying off screen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, and then, of course, shot of the dog going. Ah, the shifty eyed dog. Um, so the network executives naturally hated it and um, they go to destroy it, but then um, Homer and Mel manage to uh, get it from them and they proceed on a golf cart chase through yep. the studio lot, which I do. liked. Yeah, no, I like that. It's, it's wacky, but it's fun wacky. Especially when they're driving through saving Private Irene yeah. and uh, Mel's like, Homer, oh, Lambo's like, I'm on a skid. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> And they go flying up. I thought they were going to do an ET bit there. I'm glad that True. they didn't. Yeah. Seemed like everyone around uh, that time was doing that. People are still doing it. Yep. I can't watch a single BMX guy without him jumping in front of the moon. <laughs> Did Lethal Weapon do the, the, the jumping away from explosions bit? Oh, constantly. That's what it felt like to me more than the ET thing. Mm. Um, both are cool. Both are cool. He even says, I'm getting too old for this. Like, oh, he does. Of course does. he does. Oh, shit, Daniel. And, oh, yeah. When they're uh, after the landmine blew up the car and they're, they're flying through the air, they bust through a poster of a, <laughs> a lady in labor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, it was, that it was, was clearly funny. one of Homer's choices. It's yeah. very goofy, yeah. <laughs> it, it's funny, though. And um, you the line of, how old are you? And you're like, well, I'm told I can play anywhere from 28. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, shut okay. up. <laughs> Until I tap it. Yeah, and they uh, meet up with the family Simpsons who are at the Hollywood Automotive uh, Museum. Yep. Yeah, there's a really terrible uh, Batman bit. Oh, I know. It's my favorite. (laughs) (laughs) 
Like, uh, yeah, because so they've got all these Hollywood cars and they got the Batman car, and yeah, these. Just... I'm sorry, the Batman car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Batman. The car. Batman car. <laughs> it's got no other name. <laughs> oh, the house is on fire! Quick, let's call the fireman truck. <laughs> Oh, I've been shot. Get the Doctor Mobile. <laughs> okay, I actually kind of like Doctor Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so inside the Batman car, the wax statues <laughs> of Batman and Wob Wob. Uh, <laughs> for no real reason, the actors have been told never to talk or move. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I don't even remember what the sequence was, but yeah, the voice acting on it was horrible. It didn't sound like Adam West or Burt Ward, and like they're really easy voices to do. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, there's another data d- reference here. Um, Marge, we need your <laughs> Adam camera. West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. <laughs> um, Marge, we need your camera. Oh, I'm sorry, I spent the last roll of film uh, photographing uh, that man. I thought was Judge Judy. Yeah. So first of all, Yee. filming camera dated. Yeah. Second of all, Judge Judy joke dated like look at the time film cameras were the most advanced technology we had and everyone thought judge judy would be on forever she's still on yeah she has been on forever i i they do like a scroll through like five different cars doing basic references there there's no yeah. real humor it's just sort of these are things that exist no, point, I, don't point, think, I don't think it was such a point, reference so much as uh this is what this museum is and let's not just focus on the one car we're going to use yeah yeah and you know it made sense that they made off with the road warrior car mm-hmm. nice little bit there yeah uh, there's another chase scene as well um they they use the mel gibson dummy that was kind of good yeah yeah uh what was the line from that that yeah so they throw the dummy out of the car set it up for the network executives to run over they go oh no and then they you all saw he had a knife yeah (laughs) wait a second mel gibson's a dummy i know but he sells tickets pause for like 30 seconds and it was great it was just like waka waka all right let's go and the guy was yeah smiling and like looking at both of them he's like all right i've had my fun (laughs) yeah (laughs) you've you've humored me i mean at the same time this is exactly the thing we complain about in all the bad episodes they just like linger on these jokes for way too long and yet here meant to be the corny joke they're lingering on because no one else is if they'd all been like (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh that was witty let's go yeah (laughs) it wouldn't it would have it would have sucked but yeah, it wasn't played for laughs. It was played for crickets. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. oh, yeah. I always play for crickets. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Homer gets the idea to do the Braveheart method of um, uh, defeating them by yep, flashing their butts. Until they could take no more. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, I like that that's how he thought it was. But I didn't like his explanation that his knowledge of that was based on the movie poster. <laughs> like, there's no way that was the movie no, poster. I kind of like it, as in the Simpsons universe of that poster just had people mooning them. <laughs> That's the only way. Braveheart. The only way to put butts in seats. Yep. Is to put butts on posters. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, the network executive car crashes into Homer's butt, and I do love the animation. <laughs> like, of it's of how yeah, impacted it's impacted yeah. in the butt. Is yeah. right. Are you, are you yeah. okay? Mm. Takes a few <laughs> steps, pulls the car with him. No. no. <laughs> and then, yeah, smash cut to the premiere where they're debuting uh, the recut of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. <laughs> mm-hmm. Director's cut. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we get worst ending ever. Everyone's sick to their stomachs and then Homer and Mel are disappointed. Oh, I don't know. Why, why did it not do so well? And then Mel Gibson says another dated line. <laughs> I blame the internet and yep. the rise of swing yep. music. And it's like, we are so far from the days of the Cherry Pop and Daddies. Oh man, Mambo number five. Uh, mm. Fucking Luke Baga. But when did America lose its way? When did it stop cheering for the man with the flamethrower, the acid spraying weapon of some kind? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that was redeemed, I guess. I and then we end on the shifty eyed dog. End on the yes. shifty eyed dog. Oh, sorry, we do have Homer's. Um, how about prequels? Everyone loves those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about one with a bunch of your buddies who are constantly trying to get laid? Yeah, unfortunately, the prequel joke was not dated. <laughs> Time for the questionnaire. How many times do you think you've seen this episode? <sighs> How do you judge? I know. Um, I say, you know what? Uh, as many jacks as you can get in three hits. So maybe 11 Yeah? Uh, yourself? Ooh, I'd say about an 11 hour filibuster's worth. Ooh. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd actually say I've probably seen this 20 to 30 times. And it's one that, like, I realized that I wasn't such a big fan of later on. Yeah, I gotta say on this one, it, it underwhelmed me a lot more than I thought it would. I mean, I like it plot-wise, it's kind of fun, but there's not a lot of jokes and not a lot of... 
There's some jokes me. which are, yeah, br- yeah, give us the yucks and whatever. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I suspect the dog kid with my latte. You know, those are fun. But I don't know. Maybe I am being a bit harsh on all the dated stuff. You are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. That's not a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any memories of how this episode influenced you at all? Jokes, humor, stuff that stuck with you? Shifty eyed dog. It makes you want a latte. Yeah. My stomach's full of vomiting butterflies. <laughs> Again, Marco Miniman video. My mm. stomach's full of vomiting butterflies. My stomach's full of vomiting butterflies. My they do the other full one. Of vomiting butterflies. Uh, with Cletus. Hey, what's going on on this side? Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on on That's this side? That's a great side? jam. Hey, what's going on on this side? Hey, what's going on on this side? <laughs> awesome. Dope. That was fun. So, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Yeah. I mean, no one's off character. I gotta it's say, wacky adventures. Homer is way on character. You yeah, know? he just wants a crazy, yeah. violent action movie. That's that's him. Yeah, all pulling no punches, running up to Mel Gibson, being like, "This is what I think of you, Mister Charming, attractive man. Can I borrow a pencil? I'm gonna write it down in your fucking stupid face." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, Frank was on point. He would be disappointed at the lack of flubber in a movie. Yep. Glavin. Glavin. Mm. Like, it felt like an episode of The Simpsons, but it did very much feel like a, a Simpsons have a guest star episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was just no avoiding it. Yeah. Well, but hey, at least the flow of the episode wasn't, you know, what are you doing in Springfield, Mr. Mel Gibson? It was clearly like a... It was a buddy cop movie. Yeah. Because it was yeah. Homer and Mel, mm-hmm. and Mel's known for his buddy cop movies. I'm yep. on first name basis with him now, apparently. <laughs> um, but I would also say that Homer felt like the side character, not the main character. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, that's definitely fair. I wouldn't say that this felt like an episode where he was the lead character or anything. This was definitely Mel's adventure with his buddy Homer on the side, you know? What wacky yeah. shenanigans will those two nutters get up to next? Mel and Homer. It's Homer and Mel. Yeah, it's Homer and Mel, definitely. Do you mean me? No, the other Mel. <laughs> uh, why didn't they do a Sideshow Mel Gibson joke? <laughs> oh. I would have enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's stupid, but so was the flubber bit. So. you got to go and whoop, 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 and everything. Uh, wackiness. Yep. The yep. boneheaded Mel Gibson. Bonehead? Boneheaded Mel? <laughs> you mean me? <laughs> Perfect. Mm. All right. Nicely done. Uh, wackiness. We had mermaids. We had, you know, oh the whole chase God. sequence. We had... Yep. Uh, landing a jet on a, you know, public street. That's not legal. That's Shameful. Shameful. Yep. Uh, yeah, John Travolta, like, not being able to hire someone to help him move. He likes the personal touch, eh? They flew through the poster of the woman giving birth, and they crashed the car. Nobody died. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, the car gets stuck in Homer's butt. Yeah, that's pr- that's pretty wacky. Yeah, uh, we did miss the line of well, the one on left is Mel Gibson. I don't know who the other two guys are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Heart. No, there nope. wasn't any. <laughs> Come on, they expressed deep sympathy for the time that America lost its way and stopped going for ultra violent movies and wanted movies where people talk. <laughs> oh, how I lament mm. that and yearn for those years. Mm. Those are all the smart words I know. It was beautiful, man. Thank you. There was... I lamented that yearning. Homer's <laughs> seething jealousy from Marge's irrational Gibson lust. Mm-hmm. Mm. All you, you know. guitarists out there, we all got a bit of Gibson lust. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes or no, would you watch this episode again? Yeah. Be a casual watch. Yeah. I will look at my phone while it's on. That's it. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get cravings for it, but... Mm. I'd enjoy it if it was happening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, mm, you think I'm you're not, done I'm, with it, don't you? I'm done with it. Yeah. I, I mean, I've watched it a lot, first of all. Mm-hmm. And second of all, like, I don't mind season 11 by and large. And, you know, it's the first episode on the first disc. So it's actually a really easy one to skip, too. Mm. So it just conveniently doesn't there's, want there's me to watch it. There's better stuff to do. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you took a bit too much umbrage at all the dated reference at great word right at, at all the dated references like i don't know people that are too young to appreciate braveheart was a thing back in the 90s aren't gonna care they're just gonna be like oh it's some old movie yeah. um no one's gonna be like i can't believe all these people are talking about things that i don't understand why isn't the comedy written with me in mind mm-hmm. <laughs> well i mean it's not like i mean i've been on a fraser kick right lately and it's like oh, i'm not aware of that concerto this is boring <laughs> you know but um 
To be fair, you didn't put, pull them up on the d- most dated reference they make, which is to uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, they made a reference to it being a remake, which unfortunately has become a timeless concept as of today. <laughs> Remakes. Yeah. Or timeless concepts. Yeah, okay. <laughs> both. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we might watch it again. What playlist are we going to put it in? Um, Guest star palooza. Yeah. Car chases. Car chase. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that was a great car chase scene. Yeah. yeah. Marge lust. Marge lust. Mm. All right. <laughs> Let's rank this thing. Deal. <laughs> I'll take that deal. Shag, kick it off. Um, To me, I would call this... You know, you know, yeah, it's not bad and it's not good. It's got some moments and I enjoyed it, and I'm kind of like, eh. I never quite know how mean I have to be feeling before I bronze something, mm, sure. Because, like, there's silver and gold, and there's co- copper, gonium, plutonium above that, diamond dealer. Um, <laughs> so, like, bronze is basically almost a failure it's but also it's our midway point isn't it it's yep. like you got participation under it and you got failure under mm-hmm. it i i clearly failed the last episode but i could almost <laughs> have called that a participation it was just there oh. bland and been so annoying, then yeah. yeah it was almost bland and, and forgettable mm. this one i wouldn't quite call it forgettable you know um i definitely remember it there are a bunch of jokes that i laughed at mm-hmm. um and it was a wacky adventure romp where all the characters were in keeping. So, what's your official ranking? I think I'm going to say silver. I just kind of talked myself off. I'm like, you know what? There are a bunch of stuff that I kind of like about this movie. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's not gold class. It's not like spend $40 on the tickets and, and get a cocktail when you're watching it. But 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 it was... It was, it was okay. Yeah. Beach. Um, I was also sitting on Brilva for quite a while there. Yep. I do remember this one being better, which is weird for me. Mm, mm. Uh, it's one of the ones I like how the plot goes and how the story flows along. And, you know, I do like some of the jokes and there's some good quotable lines there. But thinking about it, it's like if I was marathoning The Simpsons, this would be an episode I'd be completely fine with getting up and going to the bathroom during. Like that wouldn't bother me at all. Mm. So the main antagonist was an assistant producer executive <laughs> to the VP of marketing. Who was right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's one of those ones where my brains want to say silver, but my heart says bronze. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Lumber. I think I have but just fond of But what did the guts memories. say? Well, the, I told you the guts say bronze. No, the, the head said bronze. The heart said silver. Or the other way around. Um, the, the intestinal tract. You, you need to consult the holy, tr- the, the work, holy trilogy. Work, trilogy. The parts working on the Miss Peaches burger <laughs> say bronze. So I'm going bronze. I may suddenly blurt out a different rating. That's fair. Talc. Uh, see, I'm in the other boat where like, the theoretical part of me um, wants to give it participant. But the fact is, like, I enjoyed watching it. Like, There was more ba- uh, good than bad jokes in it. And... Um, yeah, I might be being a bit too harsh on the dated references and whatever, but yes, you are. Maybe that's just like it's a product of its time then, and may and then it can be like a nice bit of nostalgia. But so yeah, I'm going with bronze. I'm being nice to it um, because ultimately, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I wasn't left with a flat feeling from it that I should give for a t- participant. So yeah, mm. yeah, definitely wasn't left with a flat feel. I mean, I th- I I don't feel like it was an amazingly clever episode, but I think. The pacing and the mm. feel of yeah, the Simpsons were really the, there. It's, yeah, is much tighter. Um, which is one of why I was really kind of think. That's why I'm thinking silver, but I'm feeling the bronze. Also, I mean, p- uh, all the characters being really in themselves there, mm-hmm. you don't even notice that it's a Simpsons goes to X episode. True. Yeah, yeah. They it's... get to Hollywood and they go on their tourism shit, mm-hmm. and it doesn't feel at all like Simpsons do Japan, Simpsons do Africa, Simpsons do Ethiopian the Simpsons Rwanda. Are going to oh, Hollywood. that is the one thing I wanted to point out where Marge uh, makes the joke, we're going to Hollywood, we're here at Hollywood. Yep, yep. Oh wait, yep. did we already point this no, out? Didn't. But I actually like that joke, it was like, Hollywood, here we come. Very... Hollywood, here we are. Stop doing that, Mom. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. It was like she's been doing that the whole way. Yeah. Hollywood, we're halfway there. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood, we will be 15 minutes delayed due to heart and inclement weather. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right, guys, that tells it for the teens episode. Now, we've got one more episode for you tonight, and it's from the classic era. Yay. 
we are going to uh, go back to a time, a time when Mo was on top of the world and Aerosmith were playing a residency at the bar. Yes, my listener friend. Those are both dated references. This podcast is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listeners, here's a short clip of Marco Minimum playing drums along with quotes from cartoons. Go look it up sometime. Flies. My stomach's full of okay. vomiting butterflies. My one, stomach's two, full of three, vomiting four, butterflies. One, two, so this would be a 1916th, actually. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And he does a lot of like, kind of triplet syncopations, like da 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 So let's see. Let's try to figure out where it's at. My stomach's full of vomiting butterflies. 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 So this was a 1916th, actually. And you could do ridiculous stuff with it, you know. Let's, you know, for instance, what, what, what else do I have? Let's see that. Hey. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Hey, what's going on on this side? So, okay, he's, he's pretty much into a triplet feel, I can hear it. It's like, da 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 ba ba Is that it? Hey, what's going on on this side? 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 Hey, what's going on? So this is like you know nine eight, and you can do ridiculous stuff. What else do I have? And we are back, and we just watched that classic episode for the evening, and what a classic it was. Mm. It was Season 3's Flaming Mo, which was Episode 10 of Season 3, first released in November of 1991. Wow, what a dated reference. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, in this episode, Homer shares a drink that he invented with Mo, and Mo uh, essentially steals the recipe and uh, markets it, and uh, his restaurant finally becomes really successful, but... At the price of losing a friend. Mm. Worth it. <laughs> um, guys, what'd you think? Ah, flaming. By which I mean smashing. <laughs> By which I mean great. Yeah. Mo, 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 <laughs> Holy crap, I just realized they did the um, being John Malkovich bit before Mo John Malkovich. Way before Malkovich. Yeah. Where they, everyone turns into... Oh, okay, because there's a bit where he goes into his own head and everyone turns into Malkovich and sings, yeah. Malkovich, Malkovich. <laughs> and uh, here we are. Mo, 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 mo. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Being John Malkovich. I know. <laughs> uh, we actually have an unintentional theme. All of these episodes started with television. Oh, there we go. Uh, we start on I on Springfield. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> No, it was it was good to see the old eye on Springfield, and especially because we did watch an episode recently from like the HD or uh, teens era that yeah, had an just... eye on Springfield and used some of this footage and cut new footage with it, and, and it yeah. went for way too long and yeah. lost all its punch. And yeah, whereas this was tight, snappy, good, and not yeah. only that, it was very nineties as well. All the like the the font and the uh, graphics yeah. and stuff, just yeah, incredibly nineties ish. And all the shameless shots of women in bikinis. Man, it was great. And him just like living life large, <laughs> getting a tattoo, having the jacuzzi with the Japanese babes. Yeah, he looks like a hair replacement ad from the 90s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Ken Brockman would have done those oh, ads yeah, too. yeah, sure. Advanced hair. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I love the, uh, the whole infotainment thing. And yeah, <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, I was just, hmm, infotainment. Um, the elephant who never forgets to brush and the... Uh, like, but now part seven on the bikini. And Bart yeah, walks by yeah. and goes, oh, hey, TNA. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, goes, what's Bart doing up? Oh, Lisa's having a slumber party. Yeah. And I, I love that how, yeah, it does the pan up through the house. and yeah, Classic yeah. bit there. Yeah. Uh, that's a classic Simpsons bit, especially. Mm. So yeah, you pointed it out when we we're watching it. Lisa's got friends in this episode. Yeah. A bit strange. And especially like good friends who come for a sleepover and seem to be having a raucously good time. Oh yeah. yeah. They're loving it there. But I will say, uh, outside of the continuity of Lisa never having any friends, I do really like that they are just being gossipy girls. Yeah. You know, pouring wax into bowls to see what shape it makes. And it'll tell you the career of your future husband. They're playing truth or dare. And they uh, jinx Bart. It's all very kids being kids, and it's it's good, always fun to see. Yeah, and uh, and especially because it gives the power to Lisa as well, and she's yeah. not really she's, ever in that sphere. Yeah, like, very real, rarely a powerful character. Bart dies, of course. 
Yep. Pretty early on in the episode as well, and doesn't <laughs> come back. <laughs> it's true. He goes away. No, you know. no, he, can't, he comes oh, back. Oh, he's in the dinner scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's alive. He might not be, you know, living well, but... Mm-hmm. but yeah, so they, <laughs> they um, you know, truth or dare, and they dare uh, uh, one of the girls to kiss Bart. So he does the classic horror movie thing of open up the fridge, get a can and close it, and they're all just standing there. <laughs> they're waiting for him. Yeah. And uh, he he runs, hides himself in his room, and you see the, the screws from the door just drop out, bing! One by one, it's ah, oh, it's yeah. brilliant. Flashes I was thinking about shadowing that. in this. It might be Chucky. I actually think that might be an alien bit. Aliens don't unscrew things. They usually just hide in the ventilation <sighs> shafts. Um, yeah, and in this time as well, yeah, they pinned him down and they got the kiss, and then um, they jinx him as well. Yeah, and I love this bit so much because um. Because I was the youngest brother, like, I got jinxed all the time. Mm-hmm. And First off, he plays along with it unquestioningly. He's like, oh, yeah. guess I am well, jinxed. Because you're a kid and those are the rules. Yeah. yeah, man. You respect the cooties epidemic yeah. and you obey the laws of jinx. Otherwise, society crumbles. I didn't speak for seven months once because I was jinxed. It was rough. <laughs> mm. People thought I was mute. My parents were really worried. Not for everyone else, though. And they're just like, son, why don't you speak? And I'm like, god damn it. You, you're getting so close. <laughs> 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 But what my, is it, my lad? <laughs> my youngest offspring. Why do no words come from your face? <laughs> and then, yeah, they go, uh, the girls come in and threaten to give him a makeover. And I like that Homer doesn't help. <laughs> he just yeah. goes, like, run for it. <laughs> again, because it's like a, a kid's world rules and he, Homer can't interrupt. He's just like, you only, you, you've just got to run. Yep, you better run, buddy. Yep, I, I, I'm not gonna, getting involved. Yeah, I could stop this as an authority figure. I am not. That's right. Uh, uh, he might even end up made over. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do not want to get in the way of that. Yeah, uh, almost. Yeah, almost like he's got an undying respect for the unwritten rules of the schoolyard. Yeah, no, I love that because even when Bard speaks, he punches him like, "Well, yeah. I'm sorry, but those are the rules." Yeah. <laughs> Although, I do like in the in the wax pouring game that she's like, "No, it's a mop," and Lisa's like, gets to be the really big optimist here, but without yeah. losing her power of just like, to me, it looks like an Olympic torch. It's a nice little bit where yeah, she gets to be optimistic. But losing none of that leader of the girl's sleepover moment, you know? Yep, so Homer's like, fuck this, go on to Moe's. And, mm. um... But Mo is out of beer. And I love the bit where Homer tries sucking out the taps and he goes, uh, hey, Barney already sucked it dry. Cut his gum up pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, like, it makes you... <laughs> ah. mm. But also, that yeah, Homer had already put his lips on it for a good couple of sucks. <laughs> like, mm, you're tasting Barney blood there. And Homer's like, hey, I know a delicious drink. And then uh, tells the story of when Patty and Selma were around doing slides of vacation. And, uh, yep. and here's Selma trying to plug her leg razor in one of those god-awful Czechoslovakian outlets. As you can see, we never quite got the hang of it. Uh-huh. And then we get the line. line of hair. Uh, as I was staring up at that hairy yellow drumstick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect noun to describe it. It is. Uh, guess I have to get a beer, but this is the last one. Yeah, which was an interesting move to have Patty drinking the beer as well. And like, she was almost relishing in knowing that she yeah, took no, oh, yeah. the last yeah. can of Homer's like, happiness. Homer's there was last beer. evil in her expression. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. But not like maniacal evil, like just the, the joy of misery. Grim satisfaction. Yeah. And I like how it was like he was just desperately mixing all the last bits of every liquor bottle. Because <laughs> everyone's got those in their cabinets. Oh, yeah. Dregs of everything. Anyway, it passed the first test. He doesn't go blind. Yeah, and yeah, in my haste, I put in the children's cough syrup. <laughs> like, there's just so many excellent word choices yeah, in this. Yeah, it's one of those ones where mm. it's, it's, yeah, brilliant in its simplicities and its subtleties. Yeah. But yeah, that he was hastily mixing everything he could in a blender and is like, whoops, yeah. cough syrup. It's not that he has to make his own drink. He has to make it as fast as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I've got like two minutes until they're going to start asking where I am and why I'm not watching the slides. Yep. And oh my God, they're at the Dead Sea. I need something to fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> so but then Selma ashes in his drink and I don't know the scientific term, but fire made it good. Dubs at the flaming Homer. And yep. And Mo's like, there's a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. Um, and I like later on in Futurama. Oh my God, there's a party in my mouth and everyone's throwing up. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, Mo passes down one of the uh, flaming homers down to the guy and the guy, uh, his phlegm's looser. He's loving this drink. It's mm-hmm. delicious. <laughs> right. I think it loosened up my phlegm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, immediately just pounces on the opportunity to... Say it's a flaming no. I'm Mo. I'm Mo. Yeah, I invented it. I'm the inventor, and that's why it's called a flaming bird. What? And yeah, Homer doesn't like take the opportunity 
now or even in the next scene at the start of Act 2 to call him on it. He's just like, hey, wow, the, the place is doing great. Mm-hmm. Mm. I wonder if it has anything to do with my flaming mo. Hey, uh, maybe it does. It's a combination <laughs> of many small factors. you know. Yeah. Like, and then people are like, I hate this place, but I love this drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, the guy from Tipsy McStaggers. I love that. What's Tipsy really like? And it's like, yeah. uh, he's actually a composite of other more successful mascots. Yep. <laughs> so the Americans are doing it too. Uh, I love Fish that bulb. Bit. So yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So this guy's trying to uh, get the drink uh, for the, their family train of restaurants, and yeah. And I love like Bo keeps talking over him and going like, "Oh well, you tell Tipsy he makes a hell of a mozzarella yeah. stick." Yeah, <laughs> this is a, a bit that they've you rehashed a few times as well. Yeah, yeah. but it's um, fun. Well, yeah, it keeps sort of reinforcing the story that yeah, um, Mo's taken this thing and he's got a very good offer on the table for it, and he's like, ah, he, it ain't for he sale. just keeps pushing his luck. Mm. Oh, but, I just I mean, meant this wasn't the, he's not the only character to think a fictional person is a real character mm-hmm. oh sure instead of writing letters to movie stars this guy writes letters to movies <laughs> dear die hard you rock do oh. you know Mad Max <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I mean Mo should get arrogant like right now he's got a very attractive waitress throwing herself at the opportunity to work there and she uh, says shan't yeah you shan't be disappointed me thinks I shan't <laughs> well, he likes her moxie. Yeah. Oh, and I love like the classic 90s sitcom burn happening here. Yeah, the banter. Would you like to go to Club Mo? I prefer to take my vacation somewhere hot. Ooh. And the whole bar. Ooh. Fucking, yeah, they pulled uh, in the Married with Children studio audience on that one. <laughs> mm, mm. Oh, I love the whole banter there. It's great. I like the show and tell moment that Bart was clearly unsupervised in his decision <laughs> oh, yeah. to yeah. <laughs> bring a bunch of litter well, liquor bottles before to that, school. You got a great one where it's like, Oh, well done, Wick. Fantastic show and tell, Martin. I pity the next student to come up, Bart Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, Martin was showing off the, what was it? It was the gas analyzer, the gas analyzing vulcanizer. I can't fucking remember. <laughs> yeah, the gas gas analyzer, chrono, chronograph, whatever. Uh, it was invented by something, something Martin, for one thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But it is the same thing that bring back later when, when Frank's trying to analyze the love nope. potion. <laughs> really? Yeah. Nice. It's nice foreshadowing. Thing. Cool. I am impressed. Simpsons right as well. It's like this episode was written for with a bit of thought in mind. I know, not by a calculator. No. <laughs> it's fantastic because like Homer's told Bart this story probably mm-hmm. like out of bitterness. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and it's just an interesting thing to have Nelson stick up and go, "Hey, Mo the bartender invented that, you wuss." <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, Mo the bartender did then, it. Then you love all the all the Mrs. Krabappel in this is insane and great when she's like. I was like, here's, I brought enough for everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take this to the teacher's lounge. You can have whatever's left at the end of the day. Yeah. Perfect, subtle, just, yeah, yeah slipped it in there. Yep. So Moses is going, you know, gangbusters, whatever term you want to use. It's busy. It's popular. Yep. He get, he gets a new, brand new neon sign mm-hmm. and uh, Mayor Quimby declares it Mo Day, despite <laughs> the fact that it's already Veterans Day. Clearly Veterans Day. Give me two day. days. <laughs> Uh, uh, so Aerosmith start, start hanging out. Yep. Yeah, uh, magazine covers. The, <laughs> the the hero of Walnut Street or something. Uh, yeah. Barn Stool magazine. Yep. <laughs> oh, you got the uh, great Bart calls in for the pr- uh, prank call uh, with Hugh Jass. Yep. That, oh, hello. I'm Which Hugh is Jass. good prank name. His his prank names are always top form. <laughs> I just love how it turns around. It's like uh, I'm a Hugh Jass. Uh, telephone. Uh, yes, Bart. We're gonna do for you. Yeah, and like sort of almost midway through season three, I'm, I'm guessing that's sort of when the writers were getting tired of the bit. Mm. So uh, it's like, how do we make it new again? Yeah, there's only so many funny names you can do like that. I mm. think. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's sort of. Um. Oh, and also the episode with um his next door neighbor Laura, where um he yeah. uses that to get Jimbo, um Jones in trouble. Like, the, yeah. So they sort of made the prank call a bit more clever rather mm. than it just being the punchline itself. Yeah, I can go. Yeah. Applause. Applause. Yes, the joke became nodding, much more nodding. sophisticated and ultimately the punchline was huge ass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sweet. But, and his delivery as well. Like, I know. Uh, both of them actually just accepting the situation. <laughs> Prank call that kind of backfired. I'd just like to bail out right now. <laughs> what a nice fellow. Better luck next time. <laughs> <laughs> huge ass is a great guy. I know, right? Stand up, dude. Mm. And yeah, so this is around the time where we meet our guest stars for this episode, Aerosmith. He's like, oh, man. He's all, Mo's all like, hey, can you guys come up? And like, oh, no, no, not really. We're really just chilling tonight. We'll give you a bowl of pickled eggs. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I mean, we're millionaire rock stars, but yeah, who wants to say no to free pickled eggs? No one, literally no one. I don't think I've ever had one. 
they taste like eggs. Yeah. That have been pickled. That have been pickled. All right. It all makes sense. There's zero surprise. Ooh. Try it with seduction. If you like pickles and you like eggs, <laughs> there's a chance you'll enjoy a pickled egg. I love that it's only a chance. <laughs> no, I'm going to love a pickled egg. It's going to be like, there's a decent odds or statistically in your favor that you're going to like a pickled egg. It's not impossible. <laughs> it's in fact plausible. <laughs> um, yeah, I enjoyed Aerosmith's per- performance in this episode. I'm not a huge fan of the band, like, really. But it was fun. Yeah. But uh, they did the good thing of, like, not anchoring the episode to oh, yeah. them, and yeah. they were fairly background. Yeah, um, didn't make a big thing about any of it. They had a bit of the music. They had a few good jokes as well. Yeah, I love Saint Louis. Got lays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's, isn't it during them we get um the first uh that sorry the next Mrs. Krabappel bit where Homer's like trying to nudge his way yeah. through, and then Mrs. Krabappel's like. Uh, well, hello there. Care to buy me a drink? And he's all like, you're my son's teacher. He's like, oh, single parent? No. Well, let's pretend you are. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's amazing. Like, just especially... I think she was buzzed from that afternoon of uh, hanging out in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> and just thought, gotta get some more of this. Yeah. Going to Mo's. <laughs> Going to Mo's. Um, you just lost a customer, Mo. I'm sorry, what? Forced yourself to What? I actually only just noticed the cleverness of this scene that he's saying to Mo, you've lost yourself a customer. As more and more customers keep throwing yeah. money yeah. and money and money at him. And yeah, it's it's good. After seeing this episode a hundred times, I'm still noticing new things about it. That is good. That is good is good. what that is. Mm. And the start of Act 3 kicks off with this excellent parody of the Cheers opening thing. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, really reminded me of the baseball episode. Yeah. Um, just the quality of the song and the wit of the writing and the mm. like freeze frame hand drawn sort of look to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I saw this episode long before I ever watched an episode of Cheers and I don't feel like I ever needed to know the reference because the still card drawings with the music over like... It let you know it was an advertisement essentially. Yeah, Before yeah. Before you knew it was a theme song to something else. Yeah. I mean, the song was referential, but it was also different and funny enough by itself that mm. it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. Mm. And there's all these frame, frame, freeze frames of people glassing each other and hitting them each other with stools. Oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, and Mrs. Krabappel and the sailors look disgusted by her. <laughs> like, <laughs> they keep the Cheers parody going with Barney walking into the room and classic. Oh, that was nice. Barney! How's the world treating you, Mr. Gumble? Yep. It's a shame they couldn't get Woody Harrelson to do that. Just Appar- that one line. <laughs> yeah, apparently they tried to, but like it wasn't like he didn't want to. They just couldn't get the timing Scheduling happening. matching, yeah, that's fine. Oh, and I was actually just reading in fun facts that uh, Catherine O'Hara was originally meant to play the uh, the waitress, but um, th- and she recorded her lines, but they were like, nope. <laughs> okay, now for my catchphrase. Really? Who's that? Um, she's the mom from Home Alone. Oh, uh, okay. okay. She's a uh, real, real she's funny a lady. She's a ton of stuff. This is around the time Tipsy McStagger's representative comes back to the bar and makes another offer because, damn it, you fool, uh, we've got lab working on this round the clock. It's also around the time when the waitress overhears Homer mm-hmm. and realizes that, that Mo stole the, the, the recipe. Yeah. And Mo's like, well, he may have invented it, but I'm the one who came up with the idea of charging six ninety five for it. <laughs> oh, man. If I mean, I, I don't think in Australia, at least, I've seen a signature cocktail for less than 20 yeah, bucks. this was 91. Yeah, yeah, i got to say. 20 this bucks, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, And I love they cut to the frink bit of them testing <laughs> the, the thing, and he goes, all right, now we figured out the secret ingredient is love. <laughs> Who's been screwing with this thing? That was the, the gas spectrum analyzing chromatograph. Yeah, yeah. The gastrom the gastronomograph. Gastron- gastronomograph. Gastronomograph. No. Chroma- chromatograph. Chromatograph? I think so. I don't remember where it was, but I wrote it down. Home uh, Mo had another classic like him censoring himself line. Yeah. He goes, Oh, Jeepers, Mary and Joseph. Oh Jeepers. <laughs> eh, not as much fun as crumb cake. I think it's at this point we um cut to Homer who's gone to see Lionel Hutz at yeah. all. <laughs> And he's like, I'm sorry, you can't copyright a drink. This goes right back to Frank Wallbanger. And I, <laughs> I've never noticed that before. I was like, that's hilarious. That was a joke that definitely flew over my head. 
Um, so uh, around this time, Homer is like feeling defeated and frustrated and angry, and uh, he's pacing the bedroom in his underwear, and Marge is trying to give him some solace in the situation, and then we have the fantastic... <laughs> uh, one of my all-time favourite bits. Yeah. Oh, man. Who wants I don't... To... I, I don't I, do we bother? Just, you know it at home. I think they need some reminding. <gasps> Oh, look at me. <laughs> I'm making people happy. I'm the magical mm. man from Happy Land in a gumdrop house on Lollipop Lane. <laughs> Slams oh, by the, the door. way, I was being sarcastic. Well, duh. <laughs> uh, Love it. I, that's one of my all-time favorite parts. That Beautiful. may have Beautiful. bumped it up a little bit for the rating. And, you know, we're trying to compare the old and the new episodes, figuring out what's happening that's, like, not so great in the new era, and... It's exactly that. He had this arrogant rant that was probably an improv and, you know, it, it was to a certain point annoying, but he totally makes it super funny by I going, just, oh, by the way, I was being sarcastic. No, no, I just love how he puts his hands on his head with he's like, in a gumdrop house. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> makes the house. Paints really the picture. Really gets carried away with his whimsy. <laughs> I know. But yeah, that he like goes, oh, yeah, I was being sarcastic. And then Marge is like, duh. Well, duh. The most sarcastic thing in the world. Ah, it's brilliant it's brilliant it's so funny yeah i love that bit give that an oscar yeah after that yeah uh the mo 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 bit mo, oh, yeah. Mo? yeah yeah mo. classic breakdown mo. which mo. which broke down really good where it was yeah he's just uh, he's listening to his children and they're uh just gradually injecting mo into Bart, are you gonna mow the lawn today yes you promised me mo money i, I mo, mow i mow <laughs> Want to go to the movies? There's a Matt Motinay. Motinay. Oh, working. Mo Play makes Mo a Mo Mo. 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 Runs out in the street and everyone's like, hi, a homo. <laughs> Which, yeah, it was um, great animation. I mean, they must have had to draw like a hundred different Mo's for that. So bit. many Mo's. So many Mo's. Mo. Mo. That's almost like a good meditation. A meditation. Mo. Ooh. Oh. You're fired. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clear out Mo' desk. Oh, and this is when we cut back to the bar, and um, I didn't actually notice this before, but the song that Aerosmith are playing there. Okay, first of all, Mo's on stage with uh, that percussion thing that's like a, a a big cylinder on a stick that yep. has beads on it. Yep, bead stick. Yeah, is that? I'm looking at you, man. You did Latin rhythms. Oh, I believe the technical term is a bead stick. It might be a guiro. Is it a guiro? No, the guiro is the reca chica, reca chica one. Then it's this one's clearly like an agave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, named after the... Um, Mushroom. <laughs> Bead stick. Yeah, so Mo's playing that weird instrument and you hear it and I was like listening out for it and then I noticed, hey, there is actually no drums in the... Um, ah, ooh. in the version. Yeah. Because they well, took them out. Where's the drummer? Yeah, the classic Joey Kramer. Miss Grabapple, I really need my drumsticks. Can't classic Joey Kramer. <laughs> Well, he's, I say classic because we... He's act- always saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially to Mrs. Grabapple. Um, But I love it. I mean, we saw it referenced the other week when mm-hmm. we did Ned and Ed- Edna's blend uh, when he came back. But yeah, Aerosmith actually did surprisingly well for the voice acting on it. Like, musicians and um, sports people are generally not the strongest voice actors on the show. Mm-hmm. But hey, sometimes they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the episodes are almost uh, over here, and this is where um, Moe's Mo's just slept with the waitress. First mm-hmm. off, wackiness, boom, through the roof. Mo sleeping with an attractive girl, a very attractive girl. Yeah. Um, also, Moe's living with his mom. That's never been referenced since. <laughs> I always assumed he was way older. Yeah. That, that is so funny, that. Don't worry, baby. My mom will be home in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> And and she goes, no, 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 I was thinking about Homer. And he was like, it's okay, I was thinking about uh, Sybil. Cindy Lauper. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get the reference, but the idea that he's like, yeah. I don't care, I was thinking about someone else. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, she convinces Mo to uh, sell the drink. And yeah, in the next scene, he's signing the papers, getting ready. And then Homer in that awesome, like, what is that? That's got to be a reference. Phantom, Phantom of the Opera. Opera. Oh, yeah? Yeah, half the oh. face covered and... Oh, duh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sells the uh, uh, he's about to sell it off, and Homer just gives away the secret. Yeah, drops the ball. It's cough syrup. Oh. Nothing but plain, or ordinary, over-the-counter children's cough syrup. <laughs> we <laughs> we usually have a lab and then just drive the inventor out of business, but <laughs> eh, this works too. Sale of E. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was great. And then, yeah, it comes back and, yeah, Danny, you pointed it out. It's like New Orleans. Like, everyone's got their own flaming mo now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Much like, oh, yeah, or like New York. Everyone's got a famous Ray's original famous pizza. And yeah, Ray's original famous, famous original Ray's, pizza. Ray's original Ray's, Ray's with famous original famous Ray's. Yeah. yeah, and then, yeah, that's what it's like in New Orleans. Everyone's got a hurricane cocktail. Everyone's got a grenade cocktail. And... Mm-hmm. Get yours in a fishbowl. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So the episode ends, everyone's got their own flaming Mo, and um, I like Homer and Moe's little reconciliation yeah. bit. So yeah. this is where the heart of the episode was in the end. The yeah. bartender and his fly. Mm-hmm. Together at last. Yeah. Oh, we did miss the bit where Homer tries to go to a new watering hole and is like, oh, yeah. can I have a clean glass? Ah, there you go, your majesty. Yeah. I yeah. love that line. I use that line yeah, all the time. <laughs> um, although when I'm doing it, I, I tend to interchange between that one and here's your crown, your majesty. <laughs> Queen of the heart is. <laughs> Such a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, but yeah, just the indignity with it at all. There you go, your majesty. Your majesty. With the, uh, with the yeah, little hands. hand gesture. <laughs> yeah, a little hand twirling. <laughs> All right, cool, guys. Well, that about does it for the plot recap. It is time for the question. Wait, wait. Now it's time. Play count. How many times do you think you've seen it? I think I've seen it like a million. <laughs> Mo. <laughs> a million? Oh, God. Infinity. Infinity plus one. Infinity plus infinity. I think the amount of times I've seen it is love. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Who's been screaming with recounts? <laughs> um, any memories of bits that have uh, affected your life? I know I definitely oh. sang uh, the Flaming Mo's theme a bunch. Oh, it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. Um, I also said, here's your crown, your majesty. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mo. <laughs> Mo. Uh, Magical Man from Happy Land. As I yeah. Said, one of my all-time oh, yeah. favorite parts. Might have been the first time I heard Walk This Way by Aerosmith, to oh, tell probably, you the truth. Probably. I, I know that really kind of got uh, j- playing Jinx going in, in, in yeah. the kids that I was four or five o'clock, <laughs> o- o'clock old with. <laughs> In the early hours of your youth. Mm-hmm. The wee hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is a, a lot of iconic Simpsons moments mm. wrapped up well, in this the episode. The Flaming Mo itself is, yeah. is so iconic they have it at Simpsons World. So. <laughs> they don't have a Flaming oh, no, they Mo. They don't. It's garbage. It doesn't taste good and it's not even purple and it's not on fire. And it's not alcoholic. So... Yeah. But they have one. <laughs> Bastards. Like, I mean, the rip which you can forgive because I, I'm, I've done this rant before. We have. Yep. <laughs> Check it out. Episode 22 of The Simpsons Index, where we talk about Simpsons World in Florida. But for now, we're going to ask, did any jokes flow over your head back in the day? I think we covered that. Like, uh, Yeah, I definitely didn't notice Buck going, whoa, TNA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. at least knowing or, uh, what it stands for. Or, yeah, or composite of other successful mascots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't get the Harvey Wall, uh, sorry, Frank Wallbanger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, These books behind me aren't just for show. <laughs> I, re- I use them to look things up now and then. Again, another one where I love their choice of words. They're filled with useful legal tidbits. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. classic hunts. Oh, yeah. so good. Oh, God. It, yeah, he is so awesome. He is. Yeah, Apartheid Now. I didn't notice that one back in the day. And Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the Return of the Gas Chromatograph. <laughs> yep. Um... Which I think was great foreshadowing, by yeah. the way. Yeah, very, very quick and subtle. And... Mm. Uh, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? No. <laughs> yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was probably one of the first ones to really explore Mo. Like, yeah, um, it was wacky having like the flaming drink, and it was it was heartfelt. And it was clever, it was fast-paced, it was funny. And you feel really bad for Homer. That's, yeah. You don't yeah. often feel bad for him. He just wanted to share something with his friend. Mm. It's just like, he hey, burned. I know a cool drink. Ooh, he got burned by the flaming moo, is what you're saying? Yeah. Like nice. Lenny. Oh, yeah, he did too. <laughs> his face just, and hair lit just up. lit yeah, up. Got some <laughs> Super Saiyan hair going on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wackiness. The Phantom of the Opera the, bit? The, the, the drink yeah. itself. Yeah, he fall, Se- he does fall off the, the rafters and crush Aerosmith. Yeah. Secret ingredient is love. <laughs> yep, yep. But yeah, the drink itself, like, okay, first of all, like the amount of alcohol that you'd need for to fill a glass oh. of that and have it set on fire. Like, oh, look, I'd say that's physics issues, not really wackiness. Yeah. No. Uh, Worth bringing up, mm-hmm. but, kids um, at home. Outside that's of a that. Jordan's anal corner. But yeah, not a particularly wacky episode. There's no, surprisingly elements. not. 
surprisingly a little whack. I guess yeah. the early seasons were more like that, weren't they? Mm. The wacky was really yeah. either they, downplayed or like written into the story yeah. well. When they started running out of ideas, the whack emerged. Yeah. yeah, it was a family show that happened to be a cartoon. Yeah. Although we do have an early episode where Homer gets mistaken for Bigfoot because he's covered in mud. Yeah, so... that's right. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Let's talk about the heart. Like said, there's some tender friend moments. Yeah. 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 The ending's very heartfelt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very sweet resolution. Um, and I do actually like Marge's attempted heart of, uh, you should just be happy that something you've, you've, you've invented is making so many people happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> beautiful sentiment. Like, She's she, really she, trying there. Yeah. She like, supported him, taking him to the law firm. And and it, then... it, yeah. She's, yeah, like I said, supports him. And I do like that she's not, she's not focused on the money either. She's like, they could be making a pretty big cut here, but she's like, no, no, you've just, you're making people happy and that's a good thing. Yeah. And yeah, at the end as well, the resolution with Homer and Mo was really nice because, yeah, it's like Mo needed to get back down to earth anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Homer brought him there crushingly quick <laughs> <laughs> by falling on Aerosmith. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, and I even like how Homer was like the one that was apologetic and like Mo was ah I was being a dick to. Oh, mm-hmm. we're both jerks. Here's a beer. Yes or no? Would you watch this again? Yes, Mo. <laughs> so he's that got you. That. He got you. Let's put it in a playlist. Mo. Mo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, musical guest stars as well. Ion Springfield. Yeah, um, Ion Springfield episodes. Inventor episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, changes at Mo's. Yeah. yeah. There's the one where he becomes... Mo's redecorating. Becomes the family feedback. The one where he becomes uh, just M. Yeah, and there's the one where, uh, other one where he turns it into a gay bar for ugly gay men. <laughs> for <a laughs> ugly gay men? Specifically. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's uh, an episode uh, in 22, I think, called Flaming Mo as well, which uh, is, yeah. But yeah, I think I remember that one being okay. Wait, if that one's, what's this one called again? It's Flaming called Mo's. Flaming Mo. Ah, uh, but. Uh, it's like a, f- it, it's, they, they're throwing back to a Simpsons? Yeah. Yeah. Yee. They yeah. become their own cultural touchstone. Yeah. Like, did you ever see that interview with uh, on the Stephen Colbert report uh, where he interviewed Rush? And he's like, your songs go for so long. I'm just wondering, are you starting to be influenced by yourself at the end of the song? Like, <laughs> 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 Yeah, so we're going to watch it again. What play- Oh, we did that. Mm. So we got to rank this thing. No. I want Beach to kick it off. I'm going to Cubic Zirconia. It is why a, it's a beautiful episode. It's not as heavily joke packed, but there's still so many iconic moments. Honestly, what got me over the line was uh, Magical Man from Happy Land. Like I said, <laughs> one of my all time favorite quotes. But it's a well paced episode. All the characters are great. Everything's it's full of those little quick funny moments. And uh, yes, yeah, it's a good story, well told and funny. What, yeah. what, what more do you want? What more do you want, Matt? <laughs> Well, I can't uh, ask for anything more from it. I'm giving it a cubic zirconia as well. It's um, I don't know if nostalgia's fucking with me though, because I wasn't so much watching this episode as just like having along with it. Yeah, yeah. I, d- I did forget Magical Man was coming, so when I realized, I was like, <laughs> "You guys, nice you little guys. surprise." Yeah, um, yeah. I, I get, I get why maybe someone would put the argument that it's not super essential, but yeah, I, totally I would. Into I, it. If someone, if Danny goes ahead and golds this, I don't know that I expression. Do do? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. What's in he going to do? His. Let's find out. What are you going to do? Hey guys. I probably I actually could rip this down a peg or two if I wanted to I'm not I'm going to give it a cubic as well um, not because it it's the funniest or the cleverest that we've seen we've seen ones where the writing is just non-stop mm. brilliance just yeah. like amazing and this isn't exactly like that but this to me is indicative of the simpsons when i think of the simpsons this is the first episode i think of it's not the only one that stands mm. out as this is what the simpsons is but this is the simpsons personified to me this is the heart of the ep- of 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 who they were yeah mm. um when when we're sitting around the nursing home aged 605 <laughs> Um, I'm going to be like, you remember that show, The Simpsons? And you're going to be like, oh, the one with the flaming mo. Yeah. It's the first thing we're going to think of. Totally. And we'll be like, weren't we on the wireless talking about that? <laughs> Back when people were staring into their phones and not um, hanging upside down in their internet chambers. <laughs> I mean, we laugh, but that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's inevitable, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> if, this, if we were doing a, a single best episode, it'd be a different story. Yeah, but yeah. this is... 
This is The Simpsons. Yeah, to it doesn't me. belong in that Parthenon of uh, fan of just great episodes. Oh Phenomenal yeah. Episodes. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we talk about the playlist question. If you're putting together a playlist of the essential ones, this one has to exist yeah, in it. Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. Well, that does it for tonight's um, episode. We uh, crowned a failure, a shiny bronze, and a c- unanimous cubic zirconia tonight. Mm, feels good. Yeah. yeah, did some good work. And You've been busy. I am going to get home so late. Mm. Oh, Thank now. you so much again for oh, coming shit. out tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always yeah. good seeing you, man. <sighs> yep, so that was episode 40 of The Simpsons Index. Uh, listeners out there, uh, thank you for listening. And um, that's been Danny. Oh, I'm I'm your discreetly pregnant Brazilian supermodel girlfriend. <laughs> That's been BT. The wax never lies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, reminding you that that's all the mustard in the house. Yay! Thank you for checking out the Simpsons Index podcast. Don't forget to go to www.thesimpsonsindex.com for the spreadsheet and information about upcoming episodes. And for today's extra content... Oh, wow. Cinnamon-in-in-in-in-in-in. I'm writing that down. That is brilliant and hard. I can do it again. I can do it again. Do you know a cinnamon in Ah, nope. Do you know a cinnamon-in-in-in for cinnamon in 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 Hey, do you know a synonym for synonym? That's hard, man. You are so I'm coming in all confident and shit. Do you know a synonym for cinnamon? Cinnamon. 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 That was cinnamon. actually a pretty decent George Takei impression right there. Yeah. Ooh, do you know a synonym for cinnamon? <laughs> hey, you got that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to go via George Takei. The synagogue had a synonym for... Si- God fucking... Oh. The synagogue had a synonym for cinnamon. Cine- <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's like... It's cinnamon. Adding synagogue doesn't make it any harder. It's already... The synagogue's the easy part. <laughs> Funny. That's right. Looks, I gotta watch yeah. Talladega Nights. That sounds amazing. It's again. It's a That's movie. That's the Will that, Ferrell movie that I, no one ever talks about. It's sort of out there somewhere. It's uh, it's it's, uh, it's a movie that is comprised of bits. Yeah, it's super derpy, but like Saren Baron Kosh, uh, Koshi Doki nails it. Oh, Simonin Sinonim. Um, Oh, you're doing this for the free gift, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. We kind of already done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My kids deserve me to see. Ah. My kids, uh, my kids deserve <laughs> to see me get a free gift. Um, I can go, do a good Nano Travolta. Nano. Yeah, uh, John Travolta has lost his car keys. <laughs> Where? <laughs> <laughs> the version of it makes it sound like he thinks it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just from the tone. Yeah. Where? Where have you got keys? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, uh, listeners, sometime this week, try making something unerotic erotic <laughs> by just saying it in the right tone of voice. I've got indigestion from <laughs> this cheese. <laughs> that that burger left me a little bloated. <laughs> I found an old Snickers in the couch and I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, women love economical. And I spoiled my appetite. <laughs> Marge, I know I, I was raw food related. I've spoiled oh, yeah. my appetite and I'm a little <laughs> nauseous. <laughs> it is time. Ooh. It's a line from a Robert Downey Jr. movie. I should probably pick a Mel Gibson one, but he was in this as well. Oh, um, do a Mel Gibson reference? Yeah. Um, I'm Mad Max. It's time for a questionnaire. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's pretty good. It sounds just like... <laughs> it sounds just for like someone, the guy from Science. From the for, from someone who's clearly never seen the movie, that was a, <laughs> just perfect. I saw the Tom Hardy one. That's basically what he did. Oh, you uh, mean, I'm you Tom mean, Hardy. I, I, I'm Mad Max. <laughs> I'm Max, I'm a little bit upset. That's pretty good. I was doing Bane Hardy. You see? Oh. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I, oh. I'm Mad I'm, Max. I'm, no, I can't do it now. No, I'm you gotta, you gotta do a bit of cupping yeah. going on. Yeah, oh. you gotta Vader it up. I'm gonna extend oh. certain parts, Batman. Oh, lovely. It's time for the question air. There we go. Hey. Citizens, there's me. I am taking the questions and giving them to you. <laughs> now you got a little fruity. <laughs> you got a bit fruity at the end. Bane there. is a little fruity he's, at the he's end. He's got there. a fr- fruit cup strapped to his face. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, mm, Batman's plums. thinking that he's going to be able to, like, break it. Uh, um, yeah, I'm depriving you of your oxygen. Aha, you fool. <laughs> that is my Cotty's fruit cup. <laughs> Mm. Oh, damn it, I can't do it. Well, I'm turned on. My keys are chafing me. <laughs> hey, baby, we're out of Coke syrup. <laughs> Can you roll a toilet paper under the door? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you just got to ask, is there a synonym for simonin? Nope, yep. no you don't. Yep. No, I said that wasn't. No, no. you said synonym for summonum. <laughs> <laughs> is there I... a homophone for sophomore? No, it didn't work. Is there a cinnamon? Uh, is there a cinnamon? In? Cinnamon? In? Is there a cinnamon? In? Oh god, is there, is there a homophone really for badly. homophobe? Hey, yeah. that's not that tricky to say. No, nah. but is there a synonym for cinnamon? No, nope. fuck, I did again, nope. didn't I? Is Cinnamon. there a cinnamon? In? In? What is going on? Is there a cinnamon? <laughs> A cinnamon in. No, no. Is there a cinnamon in cinnamon? <laughs> <laughs> a cinnamon in. A cinnamon in. Oh, well, okay, yeah, try this is cinnamon embarrassing. Cinema. Cinnamon, cinema, cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Oh, God. <laughs> is there a cinnamon cinnamon in? No, shoot. Oh, crumb cake. <laughs> All right. Back to work. Let's get to the end of this dang episode.